Um, welcome to the uh, November 15th, 2023 meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. Tonight is our big night uh, where we hopefully can weather it through and make recommendations for this round of proposals. So we are excited about that and thank you all. And Chris Holman's here. Good, that, that brings us to everyone. Um, as always, we start our, our meeting with uh, general public comment. Um, and this is where people have a chance to uh, speak on anything having to do with the Community Preservation Committee. Uh, Sarah, is there anyone out there? I see Laura and Anne Marie, but I'm assuming they're here for other issues. Is that correct? Uh, is anyone no, else? No hands or other. No hands. Anyone out to speak generally to topics related to the Community Preservation Committee? Uh, Lemmy? Yeah, I, I just want to introduce myself here because I think I'm not technically sworn in yet, but I wanted to introduce myself because um, I haven't been sworn in until probably next week, but I wanted to say hello and be here tonight. So I won't be able to participate in the meeting, but hi. <laughs> I was just elected in this last election and they haven't quite done the handoff thing yet, but I'm here. <laughs> well, we're very pleased you're here, Lemmy, and thank you so much for running for the office. You and Chris are our two elected representatives. So um, thank you so much, both of you, um, for running. Chris, for running again. I think this is your fourth time, I want to say, third time. Uh, and Lemmy, your first time. So uh Thank, thank you, both of you, uh, very much for that. Um, given that there's no further or any general public comment, Sarah, we have no minutes to approve tonight. Is that correct? We do not at this time. Okay, so moving right along. Chair's report. Um, the only thing other than introducing Emily, known as Lemmy, right? Okay. Uh, and, uh, and acknowledging Chris's running. Uh, is just to mention that Thev is going to uh, take herself out of at least voting for the Valley CDC proposal. She's on a subcommittee for Valley CDC, was unclear whether that was a conflict of interest or not. To, so to be on the safe side, and I believe, Bev, given your expertise, you can discuss those issues with us and just refrain from voting on that, if that makes sense to you. Uh, I will... Uh... Take your advice. If that's the case, I'm happy to. Okay, great, good, thank you. Um, and really, that's it. That's it for chairs. Chairs report. Uh, so we have our work cut out for us, folks. Um, we have uh, two. Let me get get the math right. Two million four hundred ninety nine thousand six hundred and four dollars in proposals in front of us. Hopefully, folks got uh, Sarah's revised financial overview for our fiscal year, um, which means we have a little bit more money, another 30,000 came in. So that's nice. We have 230, I'm sorry, 2,237,589 available to us. The difference between those two is $262,015. So that means we have $262,000 uh, over in requests than we have money for. Sarah was uh, good enough you know, in advance of the meeting to send us bonding scenarios. And for folks not familiar with that, and that may be Kevin and Chris Tate and Lemmy, um, bonding is borrowing. And in our case, there are two projects that, would, that, that we would be eligible to recommend for bonding. Those two projects are the City Hall Historic uh, Preservation Project, uh, and the pickleball courts. So those would be those would be the two. Uh, Sarah sent us um, four scenarios on each of those uh, projects. Uh, for let's go with with pickleball. There was a ten year um, bonding with two different scenarios. One was sort of paying the same amount um, per year. The other sort of back ending that amount paying a little more at the end. Um, in terms of 10 years, it came to 
uh, either $137,000 in interest that we would pay on that $550,000 after 10 years um, or $123,000. So both of those require uh, interest rates from $123,000 to $137,000. For the five-year uh, pickleball, uh, again, there are two different scenarios that Sarah presented us with. Again, one with sort of an even amount that we'd be paying in principal every year and the other sort of back-ending that a little bit. And that went from $68,000 a year to six, um, yeah, $68,000 um, to, I believe it was $66,000 uh, for the total of total projects. With City Hall, 10 years went from uh, 86,000 to 81,000, and five years went from 43,000 to 42,000. So again, uh, for Kevin, Kevin Lake and Chris Tate and Lemmy, we're allowed to borrow, it carries with it uh, uh, an interest rate issue. So we pay more than what the project came in on. And uh, we have bonded in the past for large projects, including um, Florence Fields and Bean Alley Farm and uh, Pulas both Pulaski Park 1 and 2, I believe, we bonded. I think the uh, uh, Forbes Library was bonded as well. We're still paying off a few of those projects, but I think we have just, a, just maybe three years left on that. Um, so that is an option that we have to present to, uh, to city council, to bond or not to bond. Um, Sarah has, I was talking to Sarah and uh, of what is the um, potential for new projects coming in for this next round beginning in the spring, still in our fiscal year uh, 24. She mentioned that Habitat for Humanity seems to be a definite one that's coming in to the tune of $50,000, as she thought. Um, there may be an open space project uh, that the city will be moving forward uh, as well. And um, and that is it that Sarah knew, uh, knew about, but anything is possible. We have a few months for, for, those, for those projects to come in. Um, why don't we begin with any questions that folks have for Sarah regarding fiscal issues, the financial overview, this idea of bonding, um, any of that stuff, Beth? Yeah, I'm gonna um, demonstrate my newness and therefore ignorance as to exactly how this works. But no, um, you can't you can't play that card for long here. Okay, I, I'm gonna play it for the rest of my life. Uh, <laughs> that's the, the the good thing about retiring. Um, so um, with respect to the bonding. Um, I'm assuming that there are people wiser than I who look at the markets and figure out what the best bonding strategy is. But in the Hope Springs Eternal um, category, it does seem as though we might expect some softening of interest rates. So is a shorter bonding period a better notion or recommendation if one believes in that? I'll take a stab at that. Um, so the the rates that were presented were from the uh, the city's bond council. So that's what we would likely be looking at now. Um, you know, when when we recommend bonding, the city would then pursue a, a bond anticipatory note, which may have a different interest rate from the final bond. Um, and if interest rates do change drastically, um, th we have done a, a a reassessment of those. They would just refinance it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's that's uh, helpful. And then I don't I don't really know how to think about the other funding ground. Um, so is it a given uh, that we are given that we are essentially spending or bonding everything um, that anything new that comes in would have to be bonded in the spring? So that's not likely. So the two projects that were presented for bonding are ones that would um make sense to bond because of the types of projects that they are and also would be eligible for a tax exempt municipal bond. So the, the city couldn't, for example, bond for a historic Northampton um, 
infrastructure improvement project. That that's not an so eligible bonding project. If we bond for those projects, it doesn't equal a commitment of CPA funds. It's a way to avoid committing funds. Is that correct? No. It, so it, if uh, the, if the CPC recommended bonding of you know either the city hall or the pickleball yeah. projects, that would move forward with a repayment to later come from CPA funds. So that that would next be year. Set. Next year. Next year. Yeah. Next year. So we would have the equivalent amount, whatever it is, uh, six hundred. I didn't add it up. Um, available for round two. Yeah. So if if you recommend okay. you know three hundred thousand dollars in bonding, you could then have that $300,000 available, but in return would have to make the payments from future CPA revenues. Got it. Thank you. And um, just to clarify, my understanding, Sarah, is that um, the 10-year bonding was coming in 4.25%, the five-year at 4%. Yeah. So there is a little bit of reduction with, with going in. Um, and, uh, and again, to reiterate what Sarah just said to you, Bev, is uh, if in fact we bond or recommend bonding and city council goes for it, the first payment is not does not come out until September of fiscal year 25. Um, so we're not paying that first installment this year that it comes out it comes out in, in the future. Kevin? Uh, yeah, I was just wondering in past years, uh, what proportion, uh, comes in the fall uh, of applications come in the fall as opposed to the spring. Is there a pattern? It, it seemed all over the place, really. Um, it depends on the timing of projects and other grants. And sometimes people have a lot of things in the works. So there's more in the spring. Um, it, it, hard to predict. I, I would add that, that 10 projects coming in at um, two and a half million dollars is more than we've had in quite a while, correct? Um, I think the last one was when we had, you know, single projects coming in at $2 million, which was Pulaski or Florence Fields or something. So I think this is this is a big ask with a lot of projects um, this this fall. Jeff? Um, <clears throat> my recollection is that most of them come in the fall and the committee's been on both sides as to whether to have um, funds available for the spring. And I think one time we actually got caught where we had, we had little to nothing available for a spring round. And at that point we started um, considering what the spring might look like in our fall deliberations and, and tried to set aside money um, to cover the spring of, um, going forward. So for tonight, one of my first questions would be, you know, what do we want to do for the spring? Because theoretically we can, we can spend everything tonight and there would not be a spring round, but we've already been told there's a couple projects in the pipeline. So I think that's the first thing to look at. Other uh, comments or questions for uh, Sarah on the financial overview or bonding in particular? Good to go on that. Um, the way I thought we would um, start out and sort of uh, dovetailing on what Jeff just said is to perhaps go around and have everyone speak generally on how they are feeling about bonding, about leaving money in the pot for a spring round, um, their particular affinity for certain projects that they, they really wanna see funded, other projects perhaps uh, could be reduced in funding, um, partially funded, or projects that they could see not funded uh, at all. So if we each one, I, I thought this might be helpful rather than going through, let's, let's begin with Laurel Street Housing. Um, rather than do that, let's begin with sort of a general overview. Everyone could share feelings about that. Once we do that, then we can perhaps get a sense of where we are or where the majority of us are uh, in terms of, of how we feel about, again, about bonding, 
about setting aside for the spring, about the about how strong we feel about certain projects. There may be, in fact, certain projects that we're all like, we are going to do this. And certain projects we may be like, ah, oh, that could wait, or or that perhaps that's a that's that's best left for another time. Um, I thought the sort of the uh, older members could go first. We could put Kevin and uh, Chris Tate off the hook until the end, and then you, you, the two of you will will make your your feelings known. That um, uh, and and what what we've done in the past, everybody speaking to Lemmy, Kevin, and, and Chris Tate, is to try to power through this tonight, if it's at all possible. Waiting for two weeks, it's like, uh, well, some of us can't remember what where we were two weeks ago at all. So it's like, what are we talking about? Um, if the meeting, go, this is not a school committee meeting, it will not go five hours because <laughs> I can't stay away for five hours. I think some of us are, will join me in that. Um, so we'll do our best to see if we can if we can make it through. If we can't, then we don't. And we have the whatever two weeks from now, the 29th, um, to continue this this discussion. So if that's okay with folks, um let's let's begin, let's begin with general feelings. Um well, Chris Tate, yeah. Let's have one uh more general question. So I, I see that there's uh available funds, there's different like allocations of funds, the affordable housing, open space, historic reserve. So are we considering which projects fit into those funds as well as when we're allocating these monies? Sarah, you wanna answer that? Uh, you're muted, uh, Sarah. Uh, so the, the set asides are a way for the city to ensure that we're meeting that in 10% mandate for each of these cat project categories. Um, in, in rounds like this, where there's a lot of flexibility to pull from different accounts, typically we just pull from, you know, if we're going to recommend uh, City Hall, for example, we would pull from the historic reserve. First, uh, check off that box. All right, that's that's done. Now we can go turn to the undesignated reserve for historic projects. So it probably won't come up with the slate of projects we have in front of us. Um, no, I, they should all be, all of those project categories should be exceeded. So we would draw from those first and then um, and, and then okay. turn to the undesignated. Thank you. I think it would come up, Chris, if we had $2 million in, in requests to, to fund another Florence Fields. And we said, oh, well, let's put all $2 million into that. Well, we really can't. We've got to set aside 10% for historic preservation, 10% for... Um, uh, affordable housing, and then we could take take all of the undesignated uh, money plus the that's open space and put it in. Does that make sense, uh, Martha? Yes, uh, I just had one other question about the bonding, um, Sarah. I know when you and I spoke earlier in the week, or maybe it was last week. Um, you you said that the Academy of Music project would not be a um, eligible for that. Can you just explain why? Correct. Uh, so initially, Bond Council had said, you know, here are the three projects that, that might make sense to bond, uh, you know, due to the life of the project and its eligibility for a general bond. But because the Academy of Music is um, controlled by a nonprofit, they thought there was a high likelihood that that wouldn't turn out to be eligible for a, a general municipal bond. Any other questions for Sarah or general comments about financial stuff? Okay, so does it make sense to do this go round? People sharing general feelings is that is that good with folks? Yes, I'm seeing heads nodding. Okay, um, I think I'll just start with looking at my screen from you know going clockwise from from my screen, which means Bev, Bev, uh, you're up first. Um, yeah, um, I hadn't quite imagined the conversation going this way, but, um, uh, without talking about the affordable housing project <laughs> in specifics, I am, um, uh, it is a priority for me personally, and it is an underrepresented application, uh, relative to the total pot of money that we have in my very limited experience. Um, and 
so my question about the next round was really about will we have the ability to respond to what for affordable housing developers is always um, a last minute or a surprise uh, need to get a local funding commitment in order to qualify for funding from the state and other parties. I think it's less predictable and less fungible than is can be true for other kinds of funding that we do. Um, and so that's a that's a way of saying I think it would be important that we um, set aside as much money as we think is rational um, for whatever comes in the door, but certainly things that um, are on a different time frame. From, from some of what we've looked at. And I do defer to Sarah and others um, as to what that number should be. Um, in terms of the applicants, um, I also am quite happy to defer to those who know way more about um, conservation than I do in terms of cost. And uh, the only thing I wouldn't Question for a minute is return. I'm a big supporter of conservation. I'm a big supporter of the ability for everybody to get out there and walk on trails, et cetera. But I can't uh, say more than that um, in terms of the, the the substance. Similarly, the the two buildings that we're talking about preserving are obviously iconic, important structures with probably many years worth of funding needs. And I think it is um, clear that we need to step up and uh, make sure that they uh, continue to be valuable assets for the city. Um, I will tell you, despite the fact that the public comments were, you know, heavily skewed in favor of uh, pickleball, um, I did go back and I appreciate your resending, Sarah, the guidelines uh, for uh, spending uh, CPA funds. Uh, I do think the guidelines provide some, you know, a little bit of head scratching. Uh, about that, but I don't think it's productive to kind of go in the weeds. Uh, but what is noteworthy uh, is the relative small amount of contribution beyond CPA funds, $50,000. And I honestly don't recall from the meeting uh, where the 50 is coming from. It's probably a material since it's a relatively small number. And so I guess I just have a question about whether you know, some people ask questions that I think could lead to a discussion about whether there's a two-phase um, investment here. Do the basics so people can go out and play, add some of the stuff that will make it uh, more fun and more robust. Um, and uh, I don't even know how to ask this question or whether it's appropriate, but is it the kind of activity where those who use it could perhaps provide some of the funding support? And I understand this is uh, basically going to be a, a, a recreation department act, uh, project, right? So it's not private in that uh, fees or dues or whatever could be charged, but um, it, it does beg the question. So it was probably more long-winded than you wanted, Brian, but the, those are my thoughts. No, that was that was perfect, Bev. Thank you. Um, Martha? Uh, I, I'm aligned with Bev on um, the approach of being conservative about spending all the funding in this cycle. I do think that there are probably going to be projects that come up in the spring that will be more urgent than others. And um, I think we need to be prepared for that and not uh, make any of those applicants, potential applicants have to wait until the fall, next fall. Um, and in terms of the, the projects, um, I also agreed a little bit with Bev as well about the pickleball, um, just because uh, it, it has, it's, a, there's a short, it's a short season. It's not used all year round. Um, it does have a huge amount of community support from the pickleball community. Um, I don't know how the extent of that community is compared with other um recreation communities in the city. And then I also had a little bit of concern about the um, just increase of impermeable surface, but that's more of an engineering um, issue. So um, that is a tough one because it had so much support from the, the public um, and the community that 
is involved. And also, you know, we are a community preservation committee and we are implementing the Community Preservation Act. And it's clear that it's an activity that creates community. So, um, and then in terms of the uh, historic preservation project, I don't know, maybe Brian, I should wait until we have those discussions. Um, I, I think I raised this during the presentations a month ago about the city's uh, approach to funding preservation of city-owned buildings and you know why we are being asked to do that and why there isn't some mechanism to provide for that within the city structure. So that that um, that was raised for me, and um, I think that was that was all I had. You know, just some topical questions about some of the conservation projects, but not enough to uh, give me hesitation about funding them. Uh, Martha, um, bonding. Your thoughts on bonding? Um, yeah, I I think it. I think I was the one who raised the question about bonding, especially for the city hall project, and at the time the academy too, um, because usually, in my experience, which isn't that vast, but I have had some experience with um, municipal building projects. You know, when there's a big renovation going on of a city hall or a town hall or a library. You know that is usually a project that is has a lot of funding coming into it from different sources, and the the town will um, you know bond bond it because it's so much money. Um, so um, it just seemed a little odd for me when it came to that the city didn't have another mechanism for funding the preservation of these extensively used city buildings. But I'm not opposed to it. Especially if it's going to allow us to um, reserve some of our funding for next spring. Thank you, Martha. Uh, Jeff? Hey, um, I'm all um, in support of bonding. I think that's the only way we get to have some money in the, <clears throat> in the spring to spend, given what we're dealing with. Um, how much that might be is um, we'll see what what the committee thinks, but um, the sheer cost of the pickleball court alone, I think, was really uh, was really surprising to me uh, to do that. I'm not a, I'm not against it, but I think the only way to to get through that and tackle the other the other projects that we're dealing with has to be uh, through bonding, but. Uh, the main main um, priority for me is Laurel Street. I think that's um, a fantastic um, proposal, and they're only asking um, three percent of the total, which is still a considerable amount of money for our rather small resources. But um, I think I think it's worth it. Um, the uh, conservation proposals I have no problem with. <clears throat> um, I do have some, um, I don't know that um, Smith Charities is urgent um, right now with, with their proposal and also the other housing proposal. I think it was Evergreen, if I have that name right. I don't have that right in front of me, but it seemed to me there we were being asked to um, do more discovery and preparation work and not so much um, do an affordable housing project. Um, so I didn't, I, I kind of thought, and, and all the money for that proposal was solely from us and not from any other source. So that, that kind of always bothered me um, when I read it, but um, I think that's probably it uh, for me right now. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Chris Hellman. Oh, okay. Um, well, let's just start with the easy one. I'm I'm committed to seeing funding for the Laurel Street project to the best of my ability. Um, when when the, uh, they came up to do their presentation, I actually asked to make sure that this was a sufficient dollar figure to to move the project forward, um, and I was assured that it was, but had they said that they thought a higher number was appropriate, then that would be where I would be supporting funding. Bonding, I'm with Jeff. 
you know, I think if we're going to do the things that we want to do and, and keep something um, for later, that's really the way forward. Um, I too have some, I, I, as a, as an elected, as an elected member, my constituents have spoken, uh, they want a pickleball court, um, how we're going to get there uh, remains to be seen. And, and, um, like some other people have said, I would have, I would have really appreciated a more robust, um, uh, contribution from, from, from the, 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 the request rather than having us pony up 90% of the money. Um, but, but let's have that conversation when we get to the specifics of it, which brings me to Smith Charities. Um, we're going to have another conversation about that. I'm going to hold my water until we get to that specific one. But um, uh, they continue to be um, a problematic um, program for me. And, and um, I think we're going to need to get into it deeper. And then another in future rounds, um, uh, Martha pointed to this. And I, I, too, have some questions about how uh, we are going to be dealing with um, historic preservation slash municipal structures as we move forward. And uh, this was something that came up at another meeting Martha and I were at, uh, where we talked about the, uh, the blueprint for um, uh, historic preservation in Northampton. So I think that this is a, this is a, an issue that we're gonna, we're gonna be, I'm, I'm certainly gonna be thinking about in greater detail as we move forward. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Julia? Yeah, hi. Um, thanks. So, um, like everybody else, 100% behind the Laurel Street project. This is a really worthy project, and we will get it finished if we can commit some funding to it. Uh, and I know we're not really talking specific projects, but that seems to be the one that everybody's starting off with as, look, we support this. In fact, one of the things we've said as a as a committee is that, uh, and, and I think those of us who are here long enough will remember that there was a, uh, it was after some big event where we sat down and said, when affordable housing comes our way, we need to do what we can do to make sure that affordable housing gets funded through this mechanism, if at all possible, because this is the mechanism that shows community support for affordable housing. So that's why for me, Laurel Street becomes so important. Uh, I think along with Chris, I'm really uh, happy to entertain each of the projects one by one as we talk about them. They each have their uh, upsides and downsides. As the parks and rec person, I'll be happy to talk. And yes, I admit also, I happen to be one of those pickleball players, but as the parks and rec person who happens to play pickleball, I will be happy to talk about that project. I think that, um, it's coming in looking as if it's all CPC and it's coming in looking as if everything's in phase one, you know, in, in a single phase. And I'm positive there's a way for us to, 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 to make some cuts on that and fund it in part and support the community and support the community building that it brings about and all those other things without uh, making it a wholehearted uh, CPC funded uh, piece. And I know the pickleball players understand that there's some responsibility for fundraising to make that happen. So I don't think that we're on the table for all of that. Um, I think we do have to look at the future. The future means the spring. We uh, it, Bev made such a great point about the you know, this is the source of money to show that the community is behind affordable housing. If there's no money in the well, then we're going to have to bond then, we're going to have to bond now. Certainly better for those who are thinking of applying to see some money sitting there, as opposed to knowing that they're coming to us saying, we want money and for you to get it, you're going to have to bond. That's just, that's uh, hard to imagine. So I think we do have to think about how much money we need to leave for the spring. Then we have to look at how much we have and then start to probably make some partial funding decisions on, among other projects, yes, pickleball, uh, and possibly some of the others. Um, and, and again, we'll talk about each project one by one, but it does mean that I'm willing to support some bonding. Julia, my understanding from past conversations is you are not a pickleball player, you are a pickleball person. I think that's what we were we were taught, so. Um, yeah. I, okay. So I just came off, I just came back from driving to Boston. We were driving behind this car and you know, the little um, antenna on the back of the car it had a pickleball dangling off of it. And I looked and I thought, I need to do that. 
And so, yeah, I'm a pickleball person. But but even as a pickleball person, you know, this is a beautiful project. It would be amazing to build it and fund it in its entirety. And that's not something that I think uh, is 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 right out of CPC. But it would certainly do a lot for the city. And you know, I will say the other side of this project, and that that's why I think courts are the most important thing, and not all the other amenities. Is this project has the potential for us to start to engage a little bit more as a city in uh, sports for people of different abilities. It's in the project from the start. And um, that's been something that our community has worked on. So yeah, yeah, I'm a person. Thank you, Julia. Um, Chris Tate. Thank you. Um, I absolutely believe we should leave funds on the table for the spring. I'm not quite sure how we figure out what, you know, what that amount should be or what percent, what percentage of the fall funds that should be, but I think we absolutely need to leave something in the well. Um, I, I certainly saw, as far as pickleball goes, I certainly saw opportunities to, you know, build kind of the minimum and then that can be a springboard for them to fundraise with tournaments or whatever to get the extra amenities like the bleachers and the bathroom and the shade structures and all of those things. So I think I, I would uh, be in favor of looking at a partial funding for that project. Um, you know, I'm new to this committee. Uh, I feel like my priority would be to fund projects that, that aren't asking us for 100% of their funding. Um, so I think when I'm prioritizing these projects, that's one of the things I'm, I'm looking at, you know, how much are they asking us for? Um, I completely support Laurel Street. So that to me is a no brainer. Um, I agree maybe with what Chris said about Evergreen and Smith projects not being the most urgent if we need to kind of defer on some things. I am also a little leery of these city central services projects. Um, I think depending on how, what we decide with bonding, if we had to cut projects, I, I would be in favor of not funding either of those this round because it seems like there could be money from other sources to fund those projects. So to me, that's $700,000 that, you know, we wouldn't have to spend there. Um, and yeah, again, just leaving, leaving money for the spring as kind of like an emergency funding mechanism, right? Because sometimes just like Laurel Street, you have these projects and they find out they're just a little bit short and uh, we could help with that in the spring if, if something like that comes up or using it as, as incubator money, you know, being able to leverage a small amount for other projects to get larger amounts from other sources. So that's kind of where I stand on things. And just as a reminder, Chris, to you and Kevin and Lemmy, money that uh, if, if we were to set aside a, a bunch for the spring and did not spend in the spring, that carries over to the next fiscal year. So it's not a use it or lose it kind of thing. So, oh my God, we got to spend everything. Otherwise it goes back. So it, it, it doesn't. Um, thank you, Chris. Uh, Kevin? Well, this being my first time through, uh, it seemed clear to me that the uh, project that I was most enthusiastic about was the Laurel Street uh, affordable housing project. Um, and the uh, project I was least enthusiastic about was uh, Smith Charities. I, I moved to Northampton 45 years ago and I've never been in there. And I actually started thinking, I don't think I know anybody who's ever been there. And if this is a community project, uh, it may be a very worthy architecturally important building, but if the community isn't engaged with it, uh, that seems uh, hard for me to justify spending money. Uh, if they came to us with, uh, hey, we've, we've raised a lot of money, we've got 200 people spending 50 or 100 bucks a piece demonstrating that, yeah, there is some enthusiasm in the community, then it would be an entirely different story. Uh, uh, so that that was my 
uh, best and, and, and worst uh, feelings. I, again, my question to Sarah about what proportion generally comes in in the fall, uh, given that there's a lot of uh, projects in application and that there uh, uh, is more money being applied for than, than we have and that that's unusual, I gather, compared to history. Uh, I uh, think for sure we've got to save some money, whether that's 60, 70 percent this uh, uh, cycle and the rest for the spring. I don't know what the exact number is, but it's probably a little more than half going in the fall, given the uh, amount of, of requests and the number of, of requests we have. Uh, but the, yes, to save um, uh, to save some for the spring. For pickleball, I was ready to say, hey, you know, how important could this be? Because I don't know anything about it until I heard the public comment. And I was actually persuaded that, in fact, there's uh, more worth to it than I was initially giving it credit for. Um, at the same time, I think that uh, uh, basically paying for it, as opposed to having the those enthusiastic uh, community members do some fundraising and coming to us uh, uh, is uh, it seems short-sighted. Um, so uh, I, I'd be supportive of, of uh, bonding uh, for that. I don't know if there's partial funding bonding that you can do, but in some way we should encourage uh, that enthusiastic community that we heard from um, to go other places as well as to us. Um, in terms of the uh, uh, City Hall and, and um, uh, Academy, uh, when uh, Chris and I did the site visits, it was clear that uh, the applicants had devised a pretty comprehensive application, but that some of the work needed to be done in sequence. Um, that uh, if if you started uh, repointing and so forth before you stop water intrusion, um, then you're really going to be undoing very rapidly some of the fixes that you're doing. So that uh, it would seem to me that there would be, be some partial funding there, um, and that's why I asked in an earlier session, is there some dialogue opportunity to find out what that lesser amount would be that would get an important set of work, uh, of, of tasks accomplished now, and that at some later time with other fundraising from other sources, perhaps, uh, they could do the rest. Um, but I, 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 I feel reluctant to, uh, uh, to, to give full funding to those projects, um, that they, part of what they need is to, uh, arrest the damaging influences that are affecting their buildings, not just go about the whole process of fixing it. Uh, so I, I think that's what I have to say for now. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Um, let me, I don't know if you want to chime in, even as an unsworn in member of this committee, if you have any comments, it's certainly welcome to, to do those, because technically I think you are in sworn, sworn or not. Um, is there anything you'd like to share? Um, no, I mean, I, I didn't see like the proposals, like I just saw the snapshots and everything, but I don't have a lot to share. Um, I'm sort of interested, just like I have questions, but, or like reflections, I guess, about like, um, in terms of like city departments requesting CPC versus like community entities. It's not like an opinion necessarily, but I'm sort of curious to hear more, not in this meeting when we're trying to make all the decisions, but just like how that all sort of pans out. So I'm, I'm sort of curious like about what comes from the city versus, you know, and I have to look through the guidelines more in, in depth to sort of like start to understand how to weigh these decisions, but I'm excited about it. So that's my two cents basically. <laughs> Great, thank you, Lemmy. It's always so, um, I don't know what the word is, invigorating to hear everyone speak, my colleagues speak, because everyone is so articulate and it's given so much thought. We're all volunteers here and it's just wonderful to be in a city where uh, people bring such thoughtful um, uh, uh, comments. Um, but before asking Sarah a few questions, just a couple of things that I heard is, and people correct me if I'm wrong, one, an overwhelming amount of support for the Laurel Street housing project. That if there's one thing that none of us are gonna take off the table, it's it's that one. It sort of hits all of those wonderful affordable housing um, points that we all are so dedicated to. Uh, another thing, 
that the seem to be a common theme is um, yes, we're all supportive of, uh, of of the community interest and the community enthusiasm around pickleball, but uh, that perhaps that's that's a candidate for partial funding and and that that's that's one that that um, requests can be made from participants, from those pickleball people to chime in and and uh, and put some money in. And that there are discrete entities that can be pulled out of that, like the bathrooms. It was 83, what was it, thousand, Sarah? 87,000 is a bathroom. Um, and that's a single, ba a, a single bathroom. It was 12, a, a lot for the water and the bleachers. And that none of those would affect the pickleball itself. So, so I think all of us were thinking that's that might be a good a good candidate. Um, I think there was hesitancy with the trustees as as small in quotes a request that was of twenty five thousand for the trustees of Smith Charities. We have fun. We we've, we've been very generous in funding the exterior historic preservation on that. That this is yet another. Uh, um, building assessment when we funded a building assessment already um, and the exterior is being done with CPC funds. So I think a lot of us expressed hesitation with that one and a uh, little unclarity as to why why that that would need to come. And I think a number of us expressed some, I, I don't know if hesitation is the right word, but, but uh, uh, issues with um, City Hall and the Academy of, 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 of Music and, and sort of where infrastructure, um, uh, central services, uh, how they should be stepping up and, and, they're, and they're providing a significant amount of the funds for both these projects. And given our, again, a theme that I heard is that we wanna, we wanna hold back money for the spring. We don't know how much that is, but we wanna hold back some of it. Um, and if in fact, the city hall has 1.6 million in funds perhaps committed already by central services as i think kevin was saying there are sequential things that need to be done perhaps perhaps be waiting on that so anyway that's some of the stuff that that, that i've heard before we move on i'd like to ask have sarah clarify um a couple of things sarah in a conversation that that you and i had um you talked about perhaps lumping both of the central services projects together, the Academy and City Hall, and that allowing them to make that decision. Uh, if we are in fact to, 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 to um, allocate or recommend some funding for them. You also talked about the possibility of lumping both of the multi-use trails together, Connecticut River and Rocky Hill, um, and allowing uh, your office planning and sustainability to make make those decisions. Can you talk about those two things? Sure. Uh, so I reached out to Pat at Central Services to discuss, um, you know, potential partial funding given the size of the applications and the limitations of the funding this round. And he expressed a strong preference for funding, if anything is going to be funded, City Hall and rather than the Academy of Music. So that's the one that he would prioritize. Um, because city, uh, the Academy of Music has been the recipient both of capital improvement funding through the city budget process, as well as CPA funds in the past, where City Hall has kind of unfortunately been languishing and hasn't received any funds. Uh, so, so that was his preference. Um, and my thought with the um, multi-use trail projects, and I, I double checked with Carolyn to see if this would make sense, is that rather than than trying to assign a dollar amount to each just saying here's what we think we can allocate to multi-use trail projects you know, use it for either one of these as the need arises and she thought that that would make sense um, because they they have a little bit of a different timeline um, but both have expenditures that need to happen but that would provide some flexibility great thank you sarah any any questions for sarah about that about the um about the central services requests and and let me just reiterate for 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 city hall there is 1.6 million dollars in um in central services 
money that has already been committed to that project. Is that correct? So it hasn't it hasn't been committed. Uh, that's what Central Services is requesting through the capital improvements process. Um, but for FY24, for example, there's five there's a five million dollar gap between what's available for the city as a whole in capital improvements projects and what's been requested. Uh, so that that's what Central Services was was shooting for and is aiming for. Uh, but they they don't have any of that committed at this point. So they were trying to backfill um, gaps and areas that would seem to make sense for CPA funding with the amount that was requested. And the same is true with, uh, then with um, Academy of Music. Correct. That uh, 608,000 is what they're requesting in addition to our 350, but not, not committed. Great, thank you. Do any, um, Chris, Hellman? Yeah, um, Sarah, uh, maybe you can refresh my memory because I could, certainly can't. Are there any um, requests out there where the CPC component is being used to leverage money that would disappear if we're not participating? This year or if Yeah, my my thinking is no, but um let me just look. Um I don't know that the timing on Laurel Street, maybe that one's not relevant because there's such a strong commitment to fund that one. Uh I mean both of the multi-use trails will eventually leverage construction funding from Federal Highway, uh, Rocky Hill much sooner than Connecticut River Greenway since it's closer to completion and is, and is nearly at 100% design. Um, no, I know Pickleball's not requesting other grants, so no, I don't think so. Thanks. My... Um... I lost internet internet connection for a moment. My computer froze in the positions that some folks were in. Chris was like, and uh, it was it was actually uh, quite amusing. Um, anyway, any other questions uh, that we have for Sarah Julian? Well, actually, it's not a question for Sarah. You know, now that we've all gone around and talked about this and we've heard what everyone has to say and even who is supporting it, I'm wondering if we want to maybe alter our process a little bit. I know that we usually put everything in the shopping cart and take everything out of the shopping cart. And and I and I'm and I'm just wondering if we want to deal with our shopping cart a little bit differently, actually check something out from the start, which to me I would propose, let's check out Laurel Street. Let's just say it's fun. That's, you know, if, if we all voted for it, that's funded. Now we've got one set aside. And if there are, uh, if there's any others that are like that, can we just do the checkout up front and then dig into these more difficult projects that we're grappling with to fund, not to fund, to partially fund, uh, but at least get something that tells us, okay, now here's what we've got left. We know, and, and can we move forward from that? So just a proposal on our next steps. And, and I think, Julie, I think it's a great suggestion. People are giving thumbs up. I think the other thing is we could suggest leaving on the shelf as well. Some that it could go both ways. Yeah. Um, for Chris Tate and, uh, and Kevin, we've done this shopping cart thing where we sort of have this initial go around. Let's put we're, you know, we're, we're in the supermarket of projects. Let's take um, some some off the shelf and let's put them in the soap soup in 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 the in the shopping cart. And that's sort of the that analogy, I guess. Is that, is that the right word? Uh, um, and Julia suggesting something a little bit a little bit different. Before we get to that, any other general questions folks have for Sarah, or just general comments about about stuff? Um, so I, I think that Julia made a great, a great suggestion. And I think I, I would like to make a suggestion that we go forward with any ones that we want to lock in at this point, uh, and that, and that, and that we're all behind. And the way to do that, I think is for someone to make a, 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 a motion, maybe too strong a word, because we may go back to this, but a motion about Laurel Street. And then we can, let me see, I'm wondering if a motion is in order uh, to fully fund something. 
uh, or at this point, do we just want to say, uh, but before we make um, formal motions to fully recommend or not recommend that we just sort of uh, our, our intent is is to move Laurel Street in its entirety forward. Um, maybe we we'll do that rather than, than say it again, Chris. A straw poll, something like yeah, that. Yeah, straw poll. Thank you. Okay. Does that does that sound? Does that make sense? Straw polls. Yes. Okay. Um, so let's let's do that right now. Uh, just maybe show of hands who is committed to moving Laurel Street forward at that four hundred twenty thousand. We'll come back with a formal motion later, but um, show of hands on that. Okay, we'll notice that Bev has taken herself out of it. She is picking her teeth on uh, on that. Um, so yeah, so we're so so Laurel Street Housing is the one that has our, our full support. Bev, was that a was that you were raising your hand on that? No, who had their hand up? Julia, Julia, was that yes in in support? Okay, thumbs up. Got it. Um, does anyone else want to suggest a project that they would like? like to uh, move forward in its entirety um, uh, at this point. And, and I guess uh, I'll, I'll look to Kevin on this and given what uh, I've heard Sarah say is that the uh, Rocky Hill Greenway multi-use trail project is at that almost stage of, of, of full plans and really needs that oomph to move forward. Um, uh, Kevin, is, is that something you can speak to or uh, Sarah, do you wanna reiterate that as well, Kevin? Uh, Sarah, go ahead, but uh, we've been working on that parcel since it uh, was still a golf course and it, the waning days of it being a golf course and it uh, gone through various iterations and now it's getting to the point where you can't tell it was ever a golf course pretty much and if we finish these trails then it'll be fully usable um, so that is uh, uh, bearing fruit I mean it's already open to the public but it'll be much more usable once this uh, trail system is fully realized yeah, so yeah. this is the, the multi-use trail within the Rocky Hill Greenway, um, just nearby the, the Pine Grove property. Um, and we've heard from a lot of people that this is really important for them to be able to access the area, not only for transportation, but also just to um, to get to other conservation areas. Um, the budget was the best guess at what is necessary, both to finally finish the designs and incorporate mass DOTs. Um, changes and also includes potentially some amount of uh, construction oversight. Um, Carolyn wasn't quite sure at this point what was needed where. So that was the suggestion maybe to lump it together with the Connecticut River Greenway in whatever amount that uh, the CPC thought it would make sense to fund trails at this point. Can I ask you a question, Sarah? If they're getting federal funding for for Rocky Hill, right? Correct. So when that federal funding comes in, it would it, there's no way that it could be completed without some additional funds. Like they'll they'll is that is that my under, is that, yeah? We have to basically we have to finish the designs before we become right. eligible for the construction funding. So right. Right. Okay. Almost Got it. there, and, but not quite. And the lumping would be lumping of the two totals together or are, I, I'm a little confused about the lumping is like like any, one you know, just, and one here's here's what's requested for this project here's what's requested for another rather than trying to iron out maybe we could cut 10,000 here maybe this amount seems better for this project just decide what makes sense for multi-use trails to allow some flexibility in project management just a suggestion no in no obligation to do that whatsoever but it just seemed like it maybe an easier way to to look at the whole thing uh, Chris Pay. Uh, what I like about the Rocky Hill project is uh, the CPA funds requested are, you know, very small overall percentage of the total project, and uh, the amount itself isn't astronomically large. Um, so I would support 
checking it out. But uh, like Sarah is saying, if we're lumping it together, maybe it's a little too complicated to check out right now. So, but I support the project in general. So, one I one one thought again, uh, Bev. I, I was. I understand that they'd like us to pick a number for trails. It's just to the extent this is about funding applications, it's a little hard to just create a slush fund for trails. So I'm wondering if we round up on Rocky Hill and maybe Sarah has a theory about what is a good rounding up number, I'd say let's go at least to 100 and um, call it done. I'll add that uh, the Connecticut River Greenway, that a million bucks for planning struck me as a huge amount of money. And this is part of uh, the nature of the beast uh, in its location and that it's a multi-year process. Uh, so this is not going to be something unlike the, the Rocky Hill Project where, you know, it's bearing fruit right now. This is something that's much more longer term. So if I, it, even though it's coming out of Conscom, I... Uh, it, it's the piece that I'm, I can't quite say least enthusiastic about, but it's just, a, it's on a different time frame than uh, the other things that we can do that'll have a benefit within a year or so. Julia? Uh, I'm going to differ from what you just said, Bev. I'd be willing to actually just put in the exact amount requested on, on, the, on the Rocky Hill. I think it was like uh, 75. I can't find my sheet right now. Yeah, put that 75. in. Yeah, seventy-five. Put that in. I, I, I would, I would go in. I'm putting that into our checkout right now, uh, and and think a little bit harder about project number two. They're they're not the same. And I'm also entirely supportive of what you said about a trail slush fund. I don't want to give them a trail slush fund. Here's your money. Finish Rocky Hill. Uh, it, it, I mean, the the the, the conversion of Rocky Hill has been a pretty amazing project. Pretty excited about that. So. Martha? Uh, this is a question for Sarah. So Sarah, if we were to um, not fund the Connecticut River Greenway right now, is that going to hamper the project long-term? I know that the city's been working really hard to get cooperation from those homeowners in Hatfield. And um, I just wondered if it would have any, one either hampered um, uh, implementation at all, or hamper the momentum that's been created um, through all the negotiations. Yeah, if if no funding were awarded for Rocky Hill Greenway, it it would essentially stop the design process. Um, we will be applying for a Mass Trails grant. Um, hopefully, so you, it's a really mean, competitive. You, you mean Connecticut for for the Connecticut River Greenway? Right, yes. Okay. Um, so in, so Rocky Hill is you know, it needs it just needs this last little bit of. Um, design funding to get it ready to go out to bid. Um, Connecticut River Greenway, as Kevin noted, is a, a much longer term project. It's farther away from construction. It's it's complicated. It's expensive, um, but it does need some infusion of funds to keep the design momentum going. Um, you know, it, at least to do some of the due diligence necessary. Um, but you know, there are other grant sources out there. The timing doesn't quite line up with where it left off but the, the city will be going after those as well okay um i'm hearing that uh sorry about the phone ring i'm, I'm hearing that um it might be good to set to tease out these two multi-use trails and rather than lumping them together uh keep them separate is that does that make sense people are nodding their heads i'm also hearing that this uh, this last little bit for the Rocky Hill Greenway uh, of seventy five thousand, it's two percent of the total budget, um, is something that uh, we might consider at this point. What do you call it, Julia? Um, checking out, right? Um, and I guess maybe I would suggest we take a straw poll on that now. Let's not deal with uh, Connecticut River Greenway. Let's instead look at uh, Rocky Hill and that and that seventy five thousand. Um, is that is that good with folks taking a straw poll? Okay, 
So again, I think we're not we're not voting here. We're we're straw polling those folks. Perhaps thumbs up for um, looking at seventy five thousand for the Rocky Hill Greenway multi use trail and and sort of checking that out. Okay, so we are unanimous in that. Great. All right, so that's um, what is that? A little over half a million that we've that we've just checked out. Uh, no, not quite that, right? 495,000, 75,000 for Rocky Hill Greenway and 420,000 for um, for Laurel Street Housing for Valley CDC. Uh, is there any other project that folks might wanna consider at this point um, checking out or putting back on the shelf? Uh, Martha? Yeah, I, I feel pretty strongly about the historic Northampton project that involves the costume collection. You know, there's there are three parts to that application. And well, I'm in support of all of them very strongly. Um, I do think that there is a real urgency with that collection. Um, Betty and um uh, Lori did a great presentation about that both here and also to the historical commission. And I think the urgency, it's such an important collection, both to the city and nationally. Um, I would just like to put that out there and to see that supported. And I don't have the number right in front of me for the amount. 65,000. 65, 65, yeah, I'm with you. I, I thought that one too. But but that's now carving into a project, right? Really? Because they were all three put into one. Um, well, I think they... There, well, there's the um, the costumes, and then there's the Parsons House, which is a historic structures report update, and then the Shepherd House, um, which is sort of the first step in starting to do the investigation of restoring that property. So I think they they could be separated. Um, I think they they were separated in 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 the proposal to us. Well, it's one ask; it's three distinct request within that one ask. Right. And again, it was, Sarah, it was 65,000 for the clothing. Sarah's checking, yes, Julia's got her, her thumbs up. Um, someone just raised their hand. Who who was that? Someone had their hand up? I think it was me, Brian. Oh, um, Jeff. No, I just support everything Martha just said. Um, I thought that I thought that was one that we could probably check out pretty quickly. Okay, so seems like there is a stroll poll imminent on this, um, that folks like the idea of at least that portion, we will revisit or we can revisit the other two portions of historic Northampton's projects, but at least the, uh, um, the clothing one. Uh, Sarah, you were recounting how you had a recent visit up there visiting um, shoes and hats and dresses, and that it was pretty remarkable. So that's 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 pretty cool. Uh, so is it is it worth a straw poll on sixty five thousand um, of the hundred and twenty of the how much did they ask uh, for um, historic Northampton? What was the total ask? Somebody uh, help me. One one twenty five, right? And change. 25,000, but at least we're looking at 65,000 committed to the clothing preservation thing. Um, so thumbs up on straw polling on that. Okay. Uh, Kevin, was that, did you do something? No, I was just going to offer that it's not the kind of collection that lights my fire, but I was impressed by the presentation that, in fact, uh, this is a pretty remarkable opportunity and it would be a shame to lose it. So does that mean a thumbs up in the straw poll? That thumbs up, yeah. Okay. If, if if it were antique boats or something, I'd be all in. But you know, clothing, nah, not so much. But uh, okay, still, <laughs> this is this that, is pretty worth. That's for next funding cycle. The antique boat, new antique boat collection. Okay, so we've got three items that we feel pretty strong. Three projects we feel pretty pretty strongly about at this point. Laurel Street housing is in um, the uh, Rocky Hill. Greenway is in, and at least partial funding of $65,000 for the historic Northampton clothing um, restoration um, project. Any other projects somebody want to recommend going in or going out?
Uh, I heard some uh, reluctance at this point for the Smith Charities building assessment. Uh, and I'm wondering if other people share that reluctance at this point. We, again, we put a lot of money in into that. Uh, I think the thought was we've got, we funded a building assessment. Why do they need another one? And there's no additional funds coming in on that. Uh, is it appropriate to take a straw poll to see if we want to um, put that off at least for now and not and not fund that this round? Is that something we can do? And I'm looking to our Martha in particular as our historic uh, commission preservation expert, but other folks I'm seeing nodding of heads. So straw poll is in order on this one. Yes. Yeah, so we're looking at taking uh, the trustees of Smith Charities off off the market. Um, putting it on the shelf, a straw poll for a yes on that, and a yes essentially means a no. Okay, so we're taking 25,000 out. Sarah, I don't know if you could help us with the math here, but I don't think we need to do it at this point, but we're just we're just watching watching what 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 we're doing. Um, everything else becomes a little more uh, convoluted, uh, perhaps. Um, but maybe I think we had some unanimity, is that a word, um, with looking at, uh, um, re rethinking the total ask of, of, of pickleball that is our largest ask. Perhaps we could save it for after and maybe save that for, um, bond, uh, for, um, um, bonding because that's that's certainly one that we can do. So maybe we can we can put off the two bonding ones for now, perhaps. Um, but let's look at perhaps let's look at the Evergreen Road housing uh, project. Um, and I I wonder if we can get uh, Jeff and Bev to to speak up on that as our two housing or two of our housing folks. Um, if the, if the two of you would like to weigh in on that, it's not a huge ask at 51,000. Is that right? Yeah. I think that's right. Um, but again, it's there is no, pro and correct me if I'm wrong, Sarah, there is no affordable housing project plan for that site in Leeds at this point. Uh, however, my understanding, again, Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong, is the city cannot proceed with essentially putting out the bid for affordable housing until there's a sewer connection hooked up to that. So it's like, are we putting the cart before the horse? Well, maybe the horse needs to be put before the cart. That doesn't make any sense what I'm trying what I'm trying to say, but I think you get you get the message. Um Bev. Um so that was my number one question, Brian, is is it true, in fact, that a developer wouldn't be interested in buying the site? if they in fact had to go and negotiate with the city for a sewer connection and figure out who's gonna pay for it. In my experience, it's not true, but perhaps in Northampton it is customary. Um, my general observation is that here, the city does a lot more in terms of upfront due diligence and or site assessment and prep that I've seen happen in a lot of other places. And that's great if you're the developer, but you know, I, I just don't have an opinion about how attractive the site is. I will say that, um, you know, there's not a lot of housing gonna go up there. And uh, so um, I'm not sure what the developer pool is for something that small. And maybe that answers the question that you want to induce someone to step forward just because it's not a particularly, uh, you know, great opportunity. So yeah. I, I, I'm not offering a recommendation. It's just saying, you know, again, I'm scratching my head trying to figure out where truth lies here. Uh, so I, going back, I, I guess, a few years to when the Affordable Housing Fund was first created, um, the city heard pretty strongly from developers that, you know, what's eating up a lot of our capacity 
And a lot of our funding is sort of the holding costs and the pre-development costs of these sites. You know, maybe they're great opportunities, but the more due diligence that we have to do, the harder it is for, actually, for us actually to move forward. Um, so the city has been working harder at getting the sites basically shovel ready for developers. Mm -hmm. There's a chance that this one might potentially be developed into a market rate and a an affordable unit, or it might just be an affordable unit. And if it's just one affordable unit, um, then you know no no developer is going to want to take the chance on connecting to a sewer and the holding costs associated with that. Um, but if it's not funded through CPA, it could potentially be funded through a combination of other sources, might make it a, a little bit more complicated, but you would likely be seeing another application for the affordable housing fund sooner than you would otherwise. Um, the uh, uh, Office of Planning and Sustainability did hear the message that if, if a project has been identified with a pretty significant cost, uh, you would prefer that a, sig a single application for that work be presented rather than um, taking from the affordable housing fund. So that's what was, they were looking at here. If I could just add one sort of more generic experience, um, I think there's a difference between uh, site prep, meaning making sure the site has the stuff, like the sewer connection, and due diligence. And in my experience, due diligence, I we would never rely on the city's due diligence for anything because we are the ones who have to say to our lenders, investors, uh, and the whole world, um, we've done our due diligence and here are our reports, blah, 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 blah. But this literally is, it's been a while since I looked at this, is about uh, connecting the sewer, right? Yeah. It's, so, it's about extending the sewer in the street. It's not about connecting the lot to the street sewer it's it's literally it's kind of odd because it seems like it should be dpw's job or something yeah just, yeah i don't quite get it um but i understand that this lot isn't very desirable um but it was a city lot and and the city's trying to you know sell off any stock it can to to for affordable housing so that's commendable right, right. uh jeff um, <clears throat> everything that Bev just said and, and to Chris's last comment, um, I agree, I agree with that. Um, I was always uncomfortable with this because we were asked to fund the whole thing. And because of the sheer amount of stuff we were being asked to fund this round, I kind of saw this and Smith charities as, um, let's set aside some money in the spring let's let's see what what else comes in in the spring and then let's let's reconsider the these proposals and so i was kind of like table it for now um and we, you know we weren't asked to really fund you know a typical affordable housing project the way we i mean our last meeting we just talked about habitat you know wasn't that great um now we might have another habitat application uh, possibly in the spring. And that's, I'm just more comfortable doing things like that. Um, extending a sewer line, um, I agree. Um, I think it's a DPW thing. Um, if you wanna go big picture, um, um, the city is, is, you know, with the last uh, election cycle we had, there's, there's a lot of talk about um, an override, um, city services not being fully funded, um, and a couple of these other projects also raise the same question mark. It's like, is this is this a way to deal with the financial reality? And I kind of saw this Evergreen project is is in the same camp. So I don't I don't have an urgency. Um, to deal with this this round, but I'm certainly willing to consider it in the spring. Does anyone, <clears throat> to use Jeff's words, does anyone feel that sense of urgency to move um, the Evergreen Road housing sewage uh, extension forward this round? Okay, if that's the case, we could do a little straw poll saying we're putting it back on the shelf. 
and not wanting to consider it. So let's do a stroll poll on that. Taking uh, 51,000 for the Evergreen Road housing through planning and sustainability off, off the, out of the shopping cart and into, okay, yeah. Um, Martha, looking for your thumb up or down. Okay, and Julia, was your thumb up there? Okay. All right, I think Julie, your suggestion of how to move forward is seems to be working well here. Um, we have uh, um, done partial funding for historic North Hampton. We've taken Rocky Hill Greenway off. We've done full funding for, I'm sorry, for Evergreen Road housing off. We put full funding for Rocky Hill. We've done full funding for Laurel Street. We have pulled Smith Charities um, out. So we're moving along uh, pretty pretty well here, I think. Uh, why don't we move on to the smallest request that we have, and that's the eighteen thousand for the um, the study or plans for Boggy Mill uh, Road Trail extending into the uh, the 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 Beaver Pond um, partway on the on the road to the Fitzgerald Lake Dam. Um, and let me, or allow me to defer to uh, to Kevin on that one as our CONSCOM uh, person. Uh, Kevin, your thoughts on this one? This, um, This will have some relatively near-term um, benefit. It's creating a path that is not a paved path, uh, which detracts from the sense of being in the woods uh, uh, for uh, people who have, have uh, ambulatory difficulties. Um, I don't. I, I don't think it fits for the. Uh, I'm a little reluctant because we haven't voted on it in this way for CONSCOM, but I don't think it holds the same priority in the minds of the commissioners as the Rocky Hill project does. I think it's just sort of, well, it'd be nice to do, it'd be good to do, and it'll allow us to do some other things that need to get fixed up with moving the kiosk and uh, uh, fixing the gate that's broken down. And, you know, so it's a fine, valuable thing, but I don't think it quite fits in the same uh, category as as Rocky Hill. Um, so Julia? They... I'm sorry, Julia. Go ahead. Yeah, I um, I'm not on conservation, but I'm not sure that I completely agree. I, I first of all, it, it is not. We're not being asked for a lot of money, but we have the potential to have a lot of impact on a certain group of yes. minoritized people. You know, anytime someone comes and says. Let's create affordable ha housing. I think about, yeah, that's the right thing to do for a group of people who, who don't have a, a loud voice. And people with mobility issues don't always have a loud voice uh, in, the, in these asks for money. And this is, it doesn't even create a long path, but it creates, it creates that opportunity. And it creates the opportunity in one of the areas in the city that's used the most by people who are going out to observe, um, you know, the the birds and the forest and the amazing bog that's out there. So I, I think that uh, this amount of money to give people with uh, different levels of mobility access to that area is, is really worth our time. Um, let's keep in mind that this proposal is not for actually doing the trail, but for the plans mm -hmm. to do the trail. So there's, uh, we would probably see them come back to us if that's yeah. the case. That's true, but if, if yeah, if this amount of money could build the trail, that'd be amazing. But still, yeah. to get to get that to get that in, you know, if we if we say no, we're pushing that down down even further, right? So we have a trail now that's not accessible, and we say no, and now we're like, yeah, that'll happen down the line. You guys wait. So I think the question now is, who do we want to put in the line? How do we want to set that line up? And can we think about that line in terms of some principles of equity? That's all. Yeah, I think that's a valuable perspective. I was just trying to communicate that I think within the Conservation Commission, if I'm speaking as a representative of the commission, I don't think it was as high a priority as some other things. But uh, the argument you make is a very strong one. Uh, Chris Tate? 
I think it's a pretty small ask too. It's not a huge amount of money. So I would be fine with it. It's 18,000, was that right? Um, other people, so so we're sort of uh, straying a little away from uh, Julia's suggestion here, but um, but that's okay. Any folks, other folks want to speak in terms of the uh, Boggy Meadow Road Trail for or again, Martha? Yeah, I, um, I, I agree it's with the spirit of this project. Um, I think it is, it's been a kind of a makeshift pseudo logging roadish path that um, mm -hmm. is not in the greatest condition. And I, I, I asked at the um, public presentation about what the plan was to surface this. Uh, I'm a landscape architect, so I deal with this kind of stuff all the time. And, um, you know, bringing in a soft surface is is a, something that's difficult to achieve, um, and and it, and actually adhere to the ADA guidelines. So, I'm not discounting the project. I think if this is a planning phase, they will explore all that and um, come to some sort of um, acceptable solution. I hope, but I just wanted to put that out there. Other folks want to speak to the merits of this. Uh, Beth? Yeah, um, I already declare myself not terribly familiar with the uh, conservation side of life, but I actually am familiar with this this location, and I just want to echo everything Julia said. I think it's uh, small money, and um, whatever concerns people have about where the money is heading, as Martha laid out, hopefully will be uh, reconciled during the planning phase. Yeah. Um, I support it. I, I didn't have any reservations really coming into tonight's meeting about it. I, I think it's a good, good proposal. Uh, let's see, Chris Hellman, any thoughts that you have? Thumbs up. Who else has not spoke to this? Um, I think maybe everybody has. Chris Tate, did you comment on this? Yeah. Okay, so I'm I'm seeing the need or the um, interest in stroll polling this to check it out at $18,000 for the design phase of Boggy Meadow Road Trail. That's not to say they won't come back to us for the implementation phase, but um, uh, so stroll polling, all those in favor, thumbs up. Uh, Julia's had a thumbs up, yep. Yeah. Okay, so that is unanimous again. Boy, we are moving along pretty well with this, right? We got Boggy Meadow, we got Park Historic North Hampton, we got Evergreen, we got Rocky Hill, we got Smith Cherries, we got Laurel. Now it's down to the last bit. I think we have four projects left. Um, why don't we go ahead and look at the two central services one, uh, both coming in at 350,000, the Academy of Music and uh, City Hall. Uh, again, Sarah has suggested we could, in fact, lump these together, or we could not. We can do whatever we want in terms of recommending. Uh, yeah, uh, Brian, just to it. clarify, I probably would not make sense to lump these they're, since they're different. You know, they're they're very different. Okay, so we're taking lumping off the table. Lumping is out of the out of the cart. Um, so let's let's take them one at a time. Why don't we start with um, with City Hall? The request is for three hundred fifty thousand out of a two million dollar, with one point six being requested again uh, from the central services uh, for the, the uh, that fund, but not, not any of that is actually actually committed. Um, anybody feel? And and uh, Chris, hey, well, I wonder how we can implement Kevin's suggestion of you know kind of understanding how we can fund the water infiltration sooner because that's important. Um, do we have a breakdown of that in their proposal or anything? Is there so, so just to clarify, Chris, I think I believe the water intrusion was Academy of Music was the roof, 
Oh, okay. Um, so I, I think it might be both, but I think it was City Hall since the asbestos was mentioned. For City Hall, was it the asbestos remediation? Yeah, so, so it was sort of, you can't, you can't just patch the hole in the roof because the roof is full of asbestos. So you have to do the asbestos and the roof at the same time. So maybe there's not as much of an avenue towards that. I, I just don't quite understand if we're going to, if this is a project that's, um, you know, that's available for bonding, why they wouldn't just bond the entire $2 million project as one thing. Like why get money from us that we're going to bond and then bond the rest of the project from another source? Sarah? Yeah, I, some cities do do that, and that was basically Pat's answer when I when I asked him about this. Um, you know, he's he's programming out all of the improvements necessary to um, not only the the downtown municipal campus, but the rest of the city's buildings as well. So he's trying to figure out what might be eligible for CPA, uh, since so much of it is not, and uh, programming that in where he can. Um, but yeah, I mean, yes, that's an option. It would, it's not been discussed as far as I know, and Pat didn't bring it up. Um, but it, it, that would have a cost associated with it as well. So it may come with an override or uh, some other financial questions or concerns. And just a reminder to everyone, but I guess particularly to Kevin and, and Chris Tate, our not funding this round does not preclude anyone coming back with the exact same proposal next round in the spring, particularly if we're holding back on, on money. Chris Holman. Okay, there we go. Um, so Sarah, uh, you were talking about um, the city looking at roughly a $5 million shortfall in capital improvements and how to come up with that. Um, is the money that the city's proposing for their contribution to this project part of that discussion? Uh, it is. So the so that's all part of the overall capital improvement. So every year, every department is asked to yep. um, put together a prioritized list of projects that would be eligible for the capital improvement funds. Central services list it was quite extensive. Um, yep. So that, that's part of the... Overall. The reason I ask is that I'm going to stipulate, I'm going to ask, I'm going to suggest that if we do approve funds for this, even if it's a request for bonding, that we stipulate that if the city doesn't pick up its portion, we, we, the CPC doesn't stand alone on this one. If that makes sense to everybody. Um, so, so Chris, you're suggesting that if the city didn't pick up the, that, that full additional fund, funds for question in this case city hall 1.7 million that we would that would preclude them getting anything from right the if they're not going to move forward with it i uh, let's just make sure that they know that the money's coming back to us okay um and again for for kevin and uh and chris tate we are I'm sorry, somehow I got I got muted there. Um, we are able to put conditions on any of the recommendations that we put forward. And those conditions can stipulate what we want the money used for or um, uh, any, you know, a, a whole lot of a lot of things there. And, and what Chris is suggesting that if in fact we were to fund one of those conditions would be, we would fund only if additional funds to pull to put the whole project forward um were allocated by by the city for central services martha martha uh yes just to follow up with chris tate uh asked about um you know why the city doesn't just bond the entire amount um rather than coming to us for a piece of it and us bonding it um so where does the money in the capital improvement fund come from? Is it always bonded money? Is it, um, you know, revenues from real estate? To, uh, what, what, how does it, where does it come from? Uh, so it's part of the city's overall budget. Okay. Uh, for, for any given fiscal year. 
Okay. So the so this additional money that they are not requesting from us, this one point six million dollars, six six million six million, um, that would be just revenue, you know, revenue, general revenues that come into the city. It's not loaned or you know, bonded. Correct. Um, and it's done on a per fiscal year basis. So you're mm -hmm. asked to, departments are asked to think long term, um, uh, but the the funding is you know by fiscal year. Mm -hmm. So we. You, the city wouldn't program like you know five or six years out. Okay, that that clarifies. But I still, I still, my question is still the same as what Chris's was about it. Yeah, I mean one one option certainly would be for the city to you know package everything that would be done maybe on the municipal campus as part of a larger project, um, go out to bond for it all at once because it probably would be far more extensive than would be would be able to be funded with uh, cash on hand and the CIP process and CPA probably all combined. Um, you know, these, the projects that were presented by central services this round do not include all of the uh, city's historic buildings. So th they're all at different stages in the assessment process. Um, notably absent is Memorial Hall, which could be another potentially very expensive one. Um, capital improvements money includes money for all the schools. Is that correct? Uh, it it can. Um, so it, you know, there's different sources of um, school building projects and other school revenues, but um, the upkeep of the school buildings uh, is often part of the capital improvements process. Uh, anybody else want to weigh in on the on city hall? All right, whether you want to or not, um, I will call on folks. Uh, Bev, I don't think you said anything about City Hall, have you? Uh, I would uh, support it, uh, given Chris Hellman's uh, caveat. Um, it, it feels like the slush fund idea, right? And we are either investing in something that's going to happen. And we, sorry, that's my dog. Um, or not. So I'll mute again, but... With that caveat, I'm in support. Uh, Jeff? Um, I, I support it um, with Chris's amendment, and I just assumed this would be one of the bonding projects and we would um, free up money for spring in part based on this. So I, I support it. Uh, just a reminder, if we were to do the uh, five-year bonding for the city hall project, that would be at the lowest interest. That would be paying forty-two thousand in additional interest on top of the three hundred fifty thousand that we would allocate for full funds. Uh, Kevin, I don't think you weighed in on um, city hall. I I would um, I guess I would feel best if there were. Uh, a, a real discussion with the planners. It seemed to me that uh, when we did the site visit that they've been blocking it out in huge terms and they hadn't really broken it down in a way that would allow to, uh, uh, us to say, oh, well, here's what needs to be done first and therefore we can fund it to this level. And I would feel more comfortable if that dialogue could happen. But since that's not happening, um, I would, uh, and based on the damage that the site visit showed, I said, yep, this is definitely important, definitely got to happen. Um, I'd be supportive of it uh, as a bonded uh, uh, way of funding, not not in cash. Um, Sarah, I, I, I know you asked um, the head of central services to come to this meeting and they were unable to come, I believe. Um, and I think just if, if you could put in the notes in the minutes to reflect that it, it, it it would have been very helpful for me, and I think I speak for all of us, to have them here at, at this. And next time we have this discussion to to strongly encourage, recommend, I, and I know you did your best on that. I'm, I'm certainly not being critical of you at all, but I guess I am being critical of them for not for not being here to to help us. Yeah, I mean, he, he had a conflict that he he couldn't avoid. Yeah. But did want want to attend. Okay, thanks. Let's see, who else, uh, Julia?
Where's that okay, mute lost, button? Uh, yeah, exactly. Lost my unmute. Uh, I was looking for the lump button, actually. Um, oh, yes to bonding. Yes to funding. I, I, I kind of look at this and I think bonding, basically what we're doing is we're buying money for spring. Is there, I mean, I understand this needs to be done and needs to be done fast, but is there any way to look at this in the spring instead and get more detail? And, and 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 get all of the expenses and get more clarity that that's my only question could we just move it to spring i would really agree with julia on that um i think we just don't have any idea of what their long-term plan is and you know you sarah you mentioned memorial hall but there are other historic buildings in the city too and so does this mean we're going to start getting all these applications for these big, large chunks of money and then having to do more bonding? Um, I just think there needs to be a, a very thorough, thoughtful discussion about it. Um, did everyone have a chance to speak on this? Chris Tate, did you speak on this one? Um, I did, but yeah, I, I support kicking this and the Academy of Music to the spring. Um, so not funding it this round. But I agree with Julia. It's like, why are we, yeah, why are we paying for this money with the bonding just to make room for the spring when we could just defer and fund it in the spring if it's, if it makes sense. Um. So three folks have spoken in favor of deferring. I think a couple have spoken in favor of, uh, of of funding with the caveat or rather the condition that Chris Hellman said, which is that the city pony up the rest of the money. But I think most of us are expressing some um, uh, need for more information on this. Uh, and I'm wondering if that's where the conversation is going, deferring this until the spring getting central services back in to explain how it fits into the overall prep, uh, picture, we'll know more in the spring about what our what our funding is. Um, and I know that Martha and Julia and Chris Tate are in support of that. Bev is putting her thumbs up. So Jeff uh, and Kevin, I think you just expressed support for that as well. Jeff and Chris, Jeff is thumbs up. Everyone, okay, so quick straw poll one more time. We're deferring both of these. It sounds like both the Academy of Music and City Hall, both city central services to the tune of seven hundred thousand. Um, uh, sorry, Brian. Actually, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't defer the Academy of Music. I just deferred the 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 City Hall. Um, okay. I'm not saying I won't defer the Academy of Music, but I'd like to. I'd like to actually have that as a separate discussion. Okay. Thank you, Chris, because the discussion that we had was just on uh, City Hall right now. So let's stick to that. So deferring City Hall to the spring, stroll pull on that, thumbs up or down. Everybody's up, oh boy, we are. So we're putting that off to the spring. Um, we, we can't demand, but we can suggest that they come back with the proposal again. Uh, are not funding it again does not preclude coming back. And so we can certainly make that suggestion that um, Obviously, we're committed to historic preservation, but we're also committed to getting getting the getting the full picture. Um, uh, looking at let, so let's move on to the Academy of Music. Um, the, the 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 one question that I had with the Academy was this uh, this leaky roof coming in to the main foyer there, which we put so much money into. Uh, and that that made me a little a little anxious. Uh, do folks want to talk about the Academy of Music and and whether we want to defer to them as defer to that as well? Uh, partial funding, um, full funding. We can't bond on this. Uh, comments on on this one, Chris Hellman. So um, it was the leaky roof that that i wanted to discuss um when when kevin and i had the opportunity to go take a look at it um 
that was really sort of the focus of my attention. And and uh, I'm not a, a leaky roof expert, um, but it was clear that that water was coming in, that it was running down the interior wall from the second from the roof over the second floor, and coming through the ceiling on in the salon on the first floor. So even where we could see the exposed areas, there was more water going on, more water penetration going on than was visible, at least to my mind, than when we were there. And uh, that causes me concern. Now, what I have to confess is I didn't do my due diligence and go back and look at their proposal and to see if engineers have looked at it to determine the extent of the problem. And that's that's on that's on on me for not doing that. Um, but my experience with water is that it's an insidious foe. And when it's in, it, it, it will only cause you more problems until you deal with it, uh, which means it may buy us time financially, but it may create a bigger problem um, than, than they already have if, if, if we delay. I'm not, I'm not attempting to put a sense of urgency on this because I don't feel qualified to do so. But that's, that's where, that's where I'm, my, my brain is at which is we may buy ourselves some time, but we may buy ourselves some more trouble. Sarah, do you have the proposal in front or can someone pull that up? And, and is the roof teased out in that as a separate line item? Uh, Chris Tay? I don't disagree with anything uh, Chris said. I'm just curious why, why Pat and Central Services was prioritizing um, City Hall over the Academy of Music. So, so that that to me was why I, I was kind of like, oh, we'll just put the Academy of Music off completely and think about City Hall. But, um, but I certainly agree that, you know, the water infiltration is always a problem that you need to handle as quickly as you can. So two questions to Sarah. One is, is the, is the roof teased out and two, why did, is it Pat? Is that this um, central services person? Uh, why why they suggested that um, that that city hall that's a uh, city hall be prioritized over the academy of music? Uh, so the prioritization I can answer quickly. Um, central services had, services had indicated a you know, more big picture that the academy of music had benefited from an influx of funds over the years to at least be able to address some of those priority issues where City Hall really hasn't had any repairs or rehabilitation. So there was a lot of um, really critical priority work to be done there. And I can pull up the application and, and look at the roof. Um, One thing I'll add while she's doing that is that um, as part of our site visit, we were able to access the Academy of Music much more thoroughly than we were City Hall um, because of the asbestos. We weren't allowed to get up into the attic space there. Uh, so I don't I, you know, I have no way of knowing. Comparatively, which one is worse than the other um, and. Uh, but I, what I did see at the academy was, I, I think, legitimate cause for concern. Any luck, Sarah? Still searching? Yeah, I have it up. I'm just trying to find where in the application it would be. Uh, other people want to speak about the academy who have not? Um, Bev? No, Jeff. I I came in um, disposed to fund it, um, and I think what Chris just said about the water damage and water being what water is is I'm still inclined to go ahead and fund it. Uh, Kevin, as I uh, said, I'd feel more comfortable if we knew what it was going to take to fix the water intrusion um, but uh, and then say wholeheartedly go for it uh, on that um, but if we fund the whole thing and I, I just uh, I don't feel like I know enough to say for sure I think Chris's caution that hey if, if uh, six more months of uh, water intrusion is going to create a bigger problem then we at least want to fix that now but I don't know how much it would cost to do that 
we have in our tool belt the option to put off the Academy of Music until two weeks from now and hear back from uh, central services what that exact figure is. I, I think it's, it's you know, by the time we get around to it, I'm not sure we're going to want to, we'll have the energy to pursue council orders. Maybe we will, but that may be something that we would want to meet again, again in two weeks. And this could be, we can decide on on anything and on everything else and, and, and put that off. That's one option. Beth? That, that's exactly what I was going to say. I'm not, um, not disposed to vote in favor, but we clearly don't have enough information to put a number on the page. Yeah, I, I wasn't able to pull that out of the budget that was included in the application. Uh, anyone else want to, well, Martha, have you spoken as our historic preservation person on, on uh, the Academy? Um, yeah, this was not, re this neither this nor the City Hall project was, were reviewed by the Historic Commission. Um, but yeah, I looked at the budget that was presented as part of the application, and it's not really clear what is actually involved in stabilization stabilization of the roof. Um, they do have roofing listed as a separate item, but I don't know if there are other features in the building that are contributing to the infiltration problem. And I guess one question I would um, ask, and Sarah, if you could please direct this, um, is, is can the situation be stabilized for a period of time? Um, you know, six months. I don't know till we put it. If we wanted to put this off till the spring, can it? Is there a stabilization uh, mechanism that can be put in place to at least retard some of the infiltration? Martha, what was? Do you have that right in front of you? What the roofing uh, figure was? Um, the roofing figure was uh, fourteen thousand five sixty. Um, what fourteen thousand for the for the whole the whole roof? It seems incredibly low. I'm sorry, twenty thousand. Yeah, twenty thousand. But again, it's it the light on is canopy roofing, and I don't know if there are other items such as the masonry, wood and stucco, concrete doors and windows that are contributing to the problem. It's not clear. So it's. Yeah, it Fair. sounds crazy, Brian. I agree. <laughs> uh, anyone else want to speak on about the academy? How 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 do people feel about putting this off for two weeks? We do have a scheduled meeting on the twenty eighth. I support um, that. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Uh, straw poll, thumbs up on that. Okay, getting unanimity on that one. Boy, folks, are we ever doing good. So Academy of Music, we have put off for two weeks. City Hall, we have shelved until the spring. Buggy Meadow Road, we're all in. Historic Northampton, we can revisit, but we're at least in on the clothing. Evergreen Road is a no. Rocky Hill multi-use trail is a yes. So we've got really two more to look at. And that is the Connecticut River Greenway multi-use trail. And the other is Pickleball creation. So why don't we do the planning and step sustainability, the the uh multiple use trail. Um folks want to speak to that? Okay, that's a big ask. In fact, it's our biggest ask. Is that right? No, our second biggest ask. 535000 out of a million dollar budget this would get us up to 25% of plans. Is that correct, Sarah? Uh and some of that you're suggesting is necessary to move the project forward so it doesn't get out of the queue that it is currently in. Um, and I guess I would ask you, Sarah, if in fact we were to do partial funding for this, what might that partial funding look like that would be enough of an oomph to, to keep it in the queue and not jeopardize its, its uh, completion? Do you have... Yeah. An answer to that? I, that I don't know. So I reached out to Carolyn to see if there was a logical, like this would really get us something, but not everything. Um, but but she didn't have a good sense of, you know, this is what would make sense that because we have the budget that was provided from the engineers, all of that will be necessary to get the design to the next step. 
uh, in the mass DOT process. Um, maybe there are some things that could be prioritized over other things, but no, no guess from me, at least as to what might be a good partial funding um, number. When we, if I can ask you another question, Sarah, um, the, this 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 five hundred thirty-five thousand would would bring us up to twenty-five percent full funding for just the plans. Is that correct? So the the names are sort of a misnomer. Um, twenty-five percent design doesn't mean the designs are twenty-five percent complete. They're far more complete than that, but they're they're hitting uh, mass DOT project milestones for things that they include and they trigger public hearings and other measures. So it's part of a larger funding process. Um, but the you know the bulk of the engineering would really be done at the twenty five percent design phase. So when, so will planning and sustainability come back for further design work? You think? Uh, unknown. There are other funding sources for design um, that planning and sustainability will be looking at. Nothing is in hand at this point. Okay. Folks want to speak to this project? Uh, Chris Kay? I feel like this is one that we could keep in the cart for at least two weeks and, you know, look holistically at how much money is, is left over and maybe we just kind of assign a portion of it um, that reflects what we're comfortable with leaving over to the spring, if that makes sense. It's certainly an option. Uh, other folks want to speak to this? Uh, Kevin is ConsCon. And I'll just say that I, we have not discussed this at ConsCon as a uh, specific project. The general effort um, that has been going on for, I don't know, the last 15 years or so to uh, create a real usable greenway along the Connecticut River up to Hatfield. Uh, this is a part of that, but it's a very long-term effort. I, 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 uh, I, I can't say that the ComScom regards this as a very high priority. It's just something that in the abstract is a, we, something we really want to have happen over the next several years. But that's a different kind of thing than saying, oh, this is really important to fund it now. Uh, Julie, multi-use trail certainly fits into your recreation credentials. Do you want to speak to this? Yeah, I, you know, yes, we had some conversations about the multi-use trails and where this fits into the, the whole picture of the um forget the name of it, that long trail that's going to cut across Massachusetts this would be part of that. So, you know, on that level of supporting physical activity and active um, uh, transportation, we support it. But um, but but all of that is a long term plan. So, sure, we support a long term plan. Does it need funding straight away? Um, not sure. Um... Who else has not spoken about this? Uh, Beth, you want to weigh in on this one? No, Jeff. Um, I mean, it sounds like consensus of the group is to do partial funding for now, but we we don't know what that number might be. So I'm kind of uh, somebody mentioned um, deferring for two weeks and revisiting i don't know if we could get a better understanding in two weeks on this particular project the way we i think we can on the last one we talked about but it sounds like we have to do something um to continue the process so i want to do that yeah so i i just put and this was included in the application too but th this is the breakdown of why this is so expensive. So, you know, it's it's just various items for getting to the 25% design phase. Uh, so that you know, coordinating with the geotech and the H and H analysis, coordinating with the railroad. So there's not an easy like, oh, we can just strike this and move forward with the engineer. Um, so that that was the um, 
the applicant's not very, you know, satisfying answer about potential partial funding. Uh, Beth? Yeah, um, I know you keep asking me if I have thoughts and then I say no and then I say something, but um, it, it feels to me like an innovation for us. Um, maybe you ask the question, Sarah, and you don't get coherent answers, but where something has a multi-year time horizon and where the dollars are perhaps beyond a certain amount, could we ask for, you know, sort of a critical path multi-year cash forecast. Uh, it doesn't mean people aren't gonna, you know, understandably front load it a little bit because everybody wants to get their money in hand, but with maybe some contingencies. So if if I don't do this, I can't do that. As you're saying, might be true here, it's all or nothing. Um, you know, I know that in, in the affordable housing world and I'm sure each of you know that in whatever world you, you hang around in, but, um, for this committee not to be swimming around like this, it would be nice if that could be part of the application. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just tough with with a design project like this where you need to get to a next milestone because you you don't you don't have the luxury of saying, well, you know, we'll hire a separate engineer for that down the road. Like you are committing right. to hiring uh, a, a certain engineer to get you to the next phase. Uh, so there's... yeah, I, I I was speaking more generically than yeah. that because we've talked about everything from roofs to um given what you're saying i kind of get that you're you're not going to start unless you know you can keep going right I information becomes stale your reports go bad and then you have to do it all over anyway so if people think this is an important endeavor and given how much money we've punted to spring my instinct is to fund it if we believe that funding it today is important versus tomorrow and I don't know how to make that judgment. Other folks want to weigh in on this who have not had a chance? Uh, Martha, have we heard from you on this? Uh, you're muted, Martha. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I think this is a pretty important project. Um, I, I understand what everybody's saying, how it's long term. We're, t we're basically paying for design and permitting and public hearing fees, which is, you know, there's nothing much tangible to derive from that. But I think in terms of the pro overall project and again, the efforts the city has made to make this work with the folks up in Hatfield. Um, you know, it's also a safety issue that I know the city is trying to resolve around Route, um, route 5 going up. Uh, along the west side of the river and getting bicyclists off that. Uh, so I do think it's important. And I think that, um, yeah, partial or, or full funding, whatever is required to keep the process moving along, I would support. Who has not had a chance to weigh in on this? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, Chris. <laughs> um, so I, I actually, I really appreciate Martha's comments. Um, I, I guess the thing that's sort of kicking, still kicking around in my head, and I don't know if it's going to let me, if it's going to hold me up or not, is previous portion of our conversation where uh, when the two projects were, we, we were looking at the deliberating, you know, how to, how to handle the two, two projects. Um, the message that we were getting out of planning was lump them together, throw us a number and we'll make it work. Uh, at least that's what I, sort of heard. And um, I think Sarah made a pretty compelling case for why that's a bad idea, which is that, you know, how do you tease out the portions that you can do now and, and the things that they, they seem to all be sort of pretty integrated. And once you once you get the process started, you don't want to start, you know, pulling it, pulling at the threads, uh, because it will unravel. And I'm not sure how I reconcile those two, two, you know, lines of logic um, in my own mind, but maybe I'm just overthinking it. Um, I don't really have a problem with the idea that it's a long-term project. Um, and I think that, um, uh, you know, if we can make a, a meaningful contribution, we have the wherewithal to do it on a project that we ultimately support, then, then there's no reason not to do it now. 
I just I just want to follow up with uh, what Chris is saying. I'm looking at this in comparison to the project that's right below it, the pickleball. Um, you know, I I see this these trails. I look at the trail that you know that goes through the Northampton that's been there for such a long time, and how many people use that? Um, you know, from both Northampton and beyond. And you know, again, while I understand the enthusiasm of pickleball. Um, it is a limited group of users. It's not everybody in the community that uses that. Um, it is open to everyone, but not everybody's a pickleball player. So I guess if I were to look at those two together, I would be in support of um, the Greenway and perhaps supporting the construction of the courts of pickleball and then the amenities, you know, find another way to fund those the bathrooms and the bleacher, the shade shelters and the benches and so forth. Um, who has not, Jeff, did he weigh in on the Rocky Hill Greenway? I did. Um, and Chris, you did? Yes, Chris Tate. Uh, Let me Kevin. just ask ask Sarah uh, one question. Sarah, if, if uh, this were delayed by a year, to get to the 25% design phase, um, would that uh, break something that interrupt some early stage momentum that's uh, happening someplace else? Is, is there a compelling reason to do this this year rather than next? Yeah, I, it may. So it's programmed on the transportation improvement program, which is the process by which pro uh, projects are reviewed regionally and uh, ultimately get funded by Mass DOT and Federal Highway. And they're, you know, just more in an intangible way. There's there's just a lot of momentum that's that's begun. You know, this has been in discussion for a long time. The city was finally able to acquire the remaining 50% interest in um, some of the critical parcels in this corridor. So it's really, it's kind of picking up steam um, and it, it may bump it back on the tip a year or two. But in, in 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 that light, I, I uh, I'm, I'm trying not to be overly pushy about Comscom projects here, uh, and I was trying to accurately reflect. And this one wasn't as high a priority as some of the other ones because it's more long term. Um, but in that light, I think, uh, yeah, if if we push it down the road and that diminishes the momentum early stage though it may be um then that's a problem that we don't need to create for ourselves so that leads me more into wanting to support it uh chris tay sarah do you have a sense of the overall construction budget is it like a 10 million dollar project at the end of the day uh, and those would uh, be like federal funds I, about that yeah uh probably more um you know with inflation and uh, right. So it's kind of a misnomer that we're paying for, you know, 50% of this. As yeah. You know, it's, it's, a, design, it's an but enormous of the entire chunk of the design, but it's, a, it, you know, when and if um, an application is presented for construction funding, it would be that, you know, here's the tiny piece of the, the overall construction budget. But now it looks a lot more daunting, but there aren't, there aren't a lot of, uh, funding sources for this amount of money. And, and if the city were able to access um, mass trails or other funding, then a, a, maybe a portion of the, the CPA funds could be returned at that point. And, yeah, and so that, you know, that checks my box of being kind of like a incubator fund for a much larger project. So I, I certainly like that. And, and, and the fact that we're funding design now, at this stage of the game, Sarah, um, reassure us that it will move forward and Mass DOT will fund it if we if if we've reached this point. They're not going to pull the rug and say, oh, you just put in half a million, and it's not going to happen. Yeah, I, I think Carolyn's answer to that was that it, she's not heard of anything that's gotten to the 25% design stage and failed because of you know some external factor. So, you know, maybe a town changed their mind or something and, and pulled it at that point, but. Um, and and, and we're aware. good with Hatfield. Uh, so we're, the city is working with the town of Hatfield on a, a land transfer and in and, and agreement as to what will happen on the Hatfield portion of the trail. Um, and Hatfield is going to be participating in the design 
stages as well. Okay, so that's a that's a done deal. Uh, they had they have an MOU that they're they're kicking around the select board and the town attorney. Okay, uh, but so that would be a condition. Forward. If we were to find that would be a condition that this MOU be approved with Hatfield before this is that. Uh, I don't that? know if that would be necessary um, because the the design is moving forward and sort of on its own. Um, we we want Hatfield's input and we want to work with them on other things. Uh, but it's already been approved by uh, Hatfield Town Meeting. But I, I and I'm hearing now from other people as well as maybe from you, Sarah, that that partial funding for this um, maybe doesn't make sense. That it's hard to tease out what that partial funding that maybe we're 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 all in or we're not in at all. Is that what other people are hearing? Is that just me? Yeah, no, I agree. I, and I think Chris Tate's comment that uh, it's misleading to think about this as a million dollar project. It's, you know, a 10, 12, 15 million dollar project that we're being asked to get started. Uh, anyone else want to speak to this? Um, I'd like to suggest then that we take a straw poll. Um, of full funding this round, the Connecticut River multi-use trail. Um, so I'm putting that out there, full funding, straw pull, multiple use trail. And that looks like everybody, but well, we sort of moved in different directions on that. That was, a, that was an interesting process. Okay, I don't think I need to recreate what we've done already, I think we have two. Um, one project we've we've kicked down the road to two two weeks from now, and that's the Academy of Music. Um, uh, the really the other two that we have to deal with is is pickleball, and I think we need to get back to historic North Campton. While we've uh, allocated the uh, sixty five thousand for the clothing. Um, there's another six, another sixty uh, thousand, I think it is, in requests for the other for the other two projects. Um, so perhaps let's let's go to let's go to historic Northampton. Can we can we wrap that one up and then move to the to the last one, the big one, uh, which is which is pickleball. Do do folks need a break? Should we take a couple minutes? Would that would that be helpful? I'm I'm seeing some yeses to and some. Uh, why don't we Why don't we do that? At least my bladder encourages us to do that. Three minutes, three three. Okay, so we'll be back at uh, nine eighteen. I'm suggesting we see.
let me, how was this discussion going for you? Are you learning yeah, stuff, it's going, enjoying yourself? Yeah, I'm learning a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, I was listening and I do have like one reflection if if, if there's any, if it's appropriate to share. I don't know if I'm allowed sure. to share, but. No, 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 please. Um, I'm just a little curious about like City Hall being pushed to the spring and then Academy of Music being pushed two weeks. Like if those. I don't know. It seemed like the urgency around City Hall was sort of unclear. And so it's just a reflection. I don't think I'm not suggesting, you know, if you all want to keep your vote or whatever. But I'm sort of curious if someone in city services was sort of putting those in like contrast or in direct competition, competition not being the right word. Um, yeah, I, I'm sort of curious about just putting them both off two weeks instead of like one off for the spring. And and I didn't see the proposals, and you all did, <laughs> so I don't know what urgency was expressed in one versus the other. But since they were kind of being talked about together, I was sort of just noticing that. But otherwise, I'm learning a lot, <laughs> and it's really okay. enjoyable to hear all of you. Well, thanks for that reflection. I think the the what I heard from our colleagues is the compelling uh, issue of water infiltration coming in from the roof, that that sort of puts it in a different category. And, and that that perhaps was one of the issues driving that. Uh, are we all back? Let's see. I believe we are. Um, so let's let's deal with the two other uh, components of the historic Northampton ask. Uh, and um, Sarah, reiter reiterate what those are for us again, please, if you can. If you have that up. Yes, one second, hold on. Um, so there was a, uh, um, engineering assessment of uh, the Parsons House and an architectural examination of the Shepherd House as uh, and also uh, historic structures report of Parsons. So Parsons House and Shepherd House. And those were two distinct entities. Um, okay, and that the, the total of those two was sixty five thousand, and each one was what? Do you have that in front of you? Whether we'd want to micromanage that or not, I don't know. But uh, I do not have the breakdown handy, but I can grab it. Yeah, maybe as we're talking, we can grab it. Uh, Martha, back to you on on these two projects for historic preservation. Can you begin this discussion? Sure. Uh, so the updated historic structures report for the Parsons House is budgeted to be um, $57,604. And this architectural examination of the Shepherd House uh, is $3,000. And um, I remember, um, I think this was asked of Betty and Laurie when they came to present to us, um, that they said that the um, if there were anything that they could delay, they would be most um, willing to let go of the Shepherd House examination. As you recall, the, um, that they've had a tenant in, tenant in that building for a long time and the tenant is leaving in March, I think it is. And so they finally have an opportunity to get into that house. You know, their goal is to, um, you know, make all of these houses uh, part of their public programming array. And they have to um, take it little by little because that's, that's how they do things. So um, I think that, I mean, I would fully support both these. I think North Historic Northampton is, um, they are just going about everything they do in the absolute on spot way um they use you know all of the highest preservation standards for everything they're really a model and as i've said to this group i think multiple times you know they are really the uh stewards of the historical collections of this city them they along with the forbes library so any effort that we um i think our money is just so well um invested with them and they're so responsible with it and as we all know with what's happened with the shepherd barn and that's a huge success story um i have every bit of confidence that what they do with these funds will be just well worth it and it's a small amount in relationship to some you know many of the other asks that we have here so 
that answers questions, but I guess that's my take on it. Thanks, Martha. Other people want to speak on this? Uh, just quick reflections, Chris Hellman. No, I, I, I'm, I'm with Martha. Uh, you know, I, I look at um, the work that's gone on at historic Northampton and our collaboration with them over my tenure here is one of the, the real success stories of um, local organizations that have come to us and, and built a partnership. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always strongly disposed to do uh, what I can to support them um, if the funding allows. So. Bev? Um, I completely uh, defer to Martha and now Chris in terms of their assessment of the, the specifics and agree that it's relatively small money. Um, let's do it. Yeah. Um, I'm all in. Um, they have a very strong track record that speaks for itself. So this just seems to be more of the same in going through the proposal. So I support it. Uh, Kevin? And I was uh, supportive uh, of all three components um, before we broke one out. So I, I'm supportive of this. It seems like it's relatively small money uh, for uh, continued improvement that is completely trustworthy at this point. Uh, Chris Tate? I don't feel a sense of urgency about these two components. And I feel like this is one that we could take up in the spring um, so we could hold up more money for the spring. Uh, Martha, you have expressed your opinion already. Julia? Yeah, I agree with Chris. I mean, I support both of these. But if we're holding out a little money, this is a spot where I would hold out a little money. Look in the spring, we have the money, but uh, super maybe these two are mm, just being held out. Okay, so um, let's see, there are what, eight, eight of us here, I think uh, five people spoke in terms of full funding at this point, two people spoke in deferring and putting this off until the spring. Uh, uh, so we, so unlike other projects, there doesn't seem to be a consensus on this one, although there does seem to be a majority for uh, full funding. Um, so in that interest, I'm gonna, I'm gonna suggest a straw poll, given the, given the majority sense for full funding uh, at, at this point, uh, unless anyone wants to to change their mind from full funding and speak to, to putting their vote off until the spring. Before we do that, I'm sorry, Brian, before we do that, could we get a back of the envelope number of where we are um, on what we've got allocated so far? Yes. So before the uh, the increase in historic Northampton, we're at 1,113,000. Say that again, Sarah. Uh, one million one hundred and thirteen thousand, and that's taken seven hundred thousand out of central services. Yes, so that's assuming no central services funding at this point. So everything that's in the shopping cart or whatever we're calling it um, is just over one point one million. Okay, thank you, thank you, Chris, for. For getting that 1.1 million, we are at at this point. Uh, Chris Tate. So, I guess I'm feeling like we're we're deferring Academy Music for two weeks, right? And I, you know, I kind of like Lemmy's point too about City Hall because we're kind of we're saying that's out because we don't really understand it, and the Central Services guy isn't here to tell us about it, but. I assume in two weeks, maybe he could be. So I feel like, you know, as far as ones that maybe we don't make a determination on this meeting, you know, I would lump these. I personally 
would lump these two into that. So then we can have that kind of full accounting and and think about it. But I, I, I certainly support the project. I'm, don't get me wrong, I support it 100%, but I'm just trying to give us flexibility in the spring, that's all. So Chris, you're suggesting putting it off or, or aligning with putting it off until the spring, not and not till two weeks from now. Well, I think we can talk about it two weeks from now. And then once we know what the final accounting is with City Hall and the Academy for, you know, with the Academy of Music, then I would rather make my decision then personally. Okay. But I support the project either way. I just don't know how the dollars and cents line up right now. How, how do people feel about that? This another, putting this off for two weeks. And okay, quick straw poll, putting off the other two academy projects for two weeks. Chris, yes, Kevin. Okay, great. So that's um, punting in a little bit, but spoken at 9.30 on a, on a Wednesday night. Um, better addressed at 7.20 on a on a following two weeks from that Wednesday night. All right, so we have moved along to cover everything. Let's have a pickleball uh, discussion. And I think our final votes will, will probably not come for another two weeks, but keeping that in mind, uh, I think we can be up for trying to see, perhaps see our way a little clearer through uh, pickleball. Um, and let's, let's, the the folks spoke a lot about that earlier on. We've already discussed it in uh, with with to, to some degree, and I think a lot of us were in favor of um, of partial funding. Uh, and uh, Sarah, is there a way that you could pull up that budget and look at sort of those? I don't want to say anything is superfluous, but the add-ons. Uh, the bathroom, the bleachers, the shade, the water fountain. Um, I, I, I have it pulled up actually. I can, and I would be happy to talk about it from. Um, Julia, do you have the updated budget or the one? I have the that... one from the design. Uh, um, I, oh gosh, I forgot his name. From okay, our, Carlos? from our Berkshire. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Berkshire design. Yeah. That's the one I, I have. For. Okay, great. Yeah. I have Carlos's uh, pulled up. And, and um, so I, I, you know, my starting point is, we are actually the group that got this started, just as a point about pickleball. The design uh, element of this was funded by CPC. So we've already come, they've already come to us once and said, or we've already come to you once, Parks and Rec, and said, hey, we think we really wanna do this for the city and would you help us by funding the design? So from that design, we have, you know, the, the, this wonderful golden empire. It's a castle, it's lovely. But really what we need are courts. And if you look at, at, at that, that means taking out the shade shelters and benches, that's 20,000, 21,000 off. Taking out outdoor hydration, we can we are fine to play parts. Sorry, Julia, are you sharing your screen? I can, I'm not sure if that's, no, I can't. Sarah, can you pull that up and share? I think it would be useful, Julia, if you could pull uh, you, up. You start. should be able to now, Julia. Okay, Let's see if I can. This computer is always so strange. Seeing it? Yeah. So, Julie, can you make that a little uh, bigger? Expand mm, that? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Perfect. Great. Whoa, right. whoa, whoa. There it is. Okay. Shade shelters and, and benches, 21,000. Outdoor hydration, 24,000. Self-contained contained restroom, 80,000. So I would absolutely see those as in a later phase of the build. And the most important part of the build, if we can fund some of it would be this part up here, which is courts and contractor. So can you scroll back down for one moment just to, so we're looking at uh, 20,000 plus uh, 24,000, right? Yeah. So that's 44,000 plus 80. So it's about 125,000 that you could see being 
taken off at this stage, Julie. Is that right? Yeah, and possibly more when you look at some pieces of the fencing. So um, I have to go back and look at the design to remember it offhand. But, um, you know, fencing around the entire structure, great idea. Fencing, I think it's the four foot fences that are these shorter ones. We could also drop off the funding on that. I mean, there are ways of really picking at this thing to get it down and say, let's give uh, a, a proportion. And still, it will get started. It will start, you know, the 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 um the players will go out and do some fundraising. Uh, right now, we're helping East Hampton doing their fundraising because they have partial funding for their courts, right? So we'll do our fundraising. We'll add to what we need to just to get the courts built. And we could have courts next summer. So if we were to take off 125,000, leaving the, um, the fencing as it is, uh, whoa. Mm -hmm. Um, that would uh, that would bring the the ass down to four hundred and twenty five thousand. We're to take off even more for fencing. We could bring it down to four hundred thousand or even less than that, and not mm -hmm. jeopardize the construction of the of the courts. Uh, Martha. Yes. Um... So I, I think if we were uh, going to partially fund this, um, I would I would recommend we do all of the courts, um, you know, not take out fencing, um, not not start picking away at the at the parts of the court design that are um, seem like extras, but they're kind of not. Um, and and the other thing too is with the money, um, you have to look at what's in this total budget. There's also 20% contingency and uh, O and P on this, so there needs to be some math calculation to actually figure out. Um, you know, if we funded just the courts, which are about 276,000, and then what was the thing at the top? I don't remember. Oh, I have it here. The contractor expenses. Um, you know, we would need to add the contingencies and the OMP on top of that to get a number. And I, I haven't done that with my calculator, but. Uh, thank you for raising that. That's a really good point, Martha. Uh, Bev? Um, yeah, what she said. And um, I, I think they answered this question. Uh, Julia, maybe you can, but uh, where does one go to the bathroom if we take the restrooms out? There, there's been a porta potty there for the. Oh, right. okay, that's okay. right. Now that you say yeah. it, yeah. yeah. And and there's money that associated with obviously with renting a porta potty and cleaning a porta potty, um, and that would have to be that would have to be there as well. Well, yeah. the the porta potty is already up there because that is a parks and rec, you know, right. field. We have softball up there. We have uh, it's a large. There's a bunch of different playing fields up there. So we're yeah. already we're already putting the porta potty up there. Uh, Chris Tay. So my calculations, if we take that 276 plus the 23 up above, I mean, that's essentially round numbers, 300,000. And then the uh, 20, 400,000, 400, uh, yeah. no, 300,000. No, the 275, 275 plus, plus 23,000. Wait, wait, scroll down there. No, up. It's oh, thank you. Oh, it's twenty-three thousand. Oh, you're right. You're right. Absolutely right. Yeah. So three hundred thousand, and then times uh, one point three eight for the twenty percent contingency and eighteen percent contractor O and P. That gets us to four hundred and fourteen thousand. So that's what I would uh, support for partial funding. Can Can you do the math one more time for us? Um, Chris, please. yeah, I'm just in in round numbers. There's the uh, twenty three thousand for contractor, which is the first line. Yeah, contractor support, contractor expenses. Yeah, and two hundred and seventy six thousand for the court. Yeah, so there's about so three hundred. It's about three hundred, right? And then we add twenty percent and eighteen percent on that. So that's just 300,000 times 1.38. That, that gets me 414,000. 
Okay. 414. Does that does that math make sense to everybody? Yes. Okay. Um, so 400 and what do you say? Sorry, one more time. 418. 414. 414. Call it 415. Okay. Julia, what do you think of that? That is more generous than I think I thought we would go. And and um As somebody would have to turn around and help do this, it it doesn't actually make that pickleball community, it doesn't put any onus on that pickleball community to do fundraising other than for the lovely amenities. I mean, we get the courts and I would be super happy with that, but but it, you know, as I just said, we're all running over to East Hampton right now to support their fundraising just for courts. And this would this would not put the pickleball community in any position to have to put their part in. You have an alternative. And I'm just saying that because I'm on CPC, right? So it's like, I mean, if I was a pickleball player, I'd be here saying, give us that 414 and we'll walk with it. But because because we have other priorities and we're kind of looking at every $10,000, maybe that's a really gen an overly generous contribution. Uh, I bet that's on a recording and someone's going to play that at a pickleball court when I'm there one day. You know, 20% contingency might be high, right? I mean, that is, that's very healthy contingency. Not in this construction market. <laughs> yeah, but Julia, I think you have a really good point. And I think that, um, you know, I had concern about <clears throat> just, you know, that it's a, it's a community of people, but it's, it's not everybody. And it's also something that doesn't operate all year round. Um, and so I think your point about having the community contribute more is is a really, really good one. I appreciate that. Bev? Yeah, I was gonna make the same observation about the contingency and the overhead and profit. Um, it is a relatively small number that you're applying those percentages to. But my sense is there's some some uh, fat in this budget beyond what we've just cut out. And maybe instead of rounding up, we round down. Uh, it, you know, if you say the essential thing are the courts, you could say something like, and we think you should fundraise 25% of the cost of those courts and we'll pay 75%. Versus, you know, let's just make the decision to take the fluff out and we'll pay all of what's left. Just a, a thought. Julia, in, in partial funding that way and depending on pickleball people to make up the difference, does that jeopardize construction for this year? I don't think so. I I think what it does is it, it you know, it pushes the hand of the, as you call them, the pickleball people uh, to get out there and, and bring in some money and do some of the work. Seek sponsors, do what we need to do to get that built. Do you have a figure that you would be more comfortable closing than the three and four, I'm sorry, 415,000? That's for courts, courts alone. Yeah, I'm proposing the percentage. I'm not going to propose the number. I, you know. So would, um, would you respond to a suggestion of, so would 300 or 350 uh, feel better? Yeah, three 350 would be, you know, again, that, that means this community has to go out and raise some money. I actually just, you know, I just was looking in the break, I went and looked and I thought, well, what's East Hampton's target and how are they, how are they moving on that? And I know their, their pickleball communities, they're trying to raise $40,000. To, to build a couple of courts and they're 50% of the way there and they only just started about two months ago. So um, I, you know, I think there's, I think there's some um, capacity to help, help fund these courts. So Kevin's making a, a 350,000 suggestion. Is that correct? Yeah. So my, my thought was that at three or 350, uh, the, the courts could get built 
and the user group would have to come up with some money um, for all the surrounding expenses. And they might in subsequent years go additional uh, fundraising for the fancy bathroom and things like that. But that uh, this would allow the, the, the felt need that was expressed so clearly by those many people who spoke at the public hearing um, that, hey, here's the money you can build the courts. All the other stuff and even probably some of the expense of the courts you got to wrestle with. But uh, we're responding, but not given. And somebody used the term palace. Yeah, this is a beautiful design. Um, uh, but I, I think getting the courts built is what people most care about. And the rec department can always come back for the bathrooms, the benches, the shade, and the wall. I, I agree. We we can we can, and that's just it. That's what you know. That's building this out in different phases. I think the other way I'm looking at that is if you know if it was three hundred fifty thousand for for what we're looking at right now in terms of our um, how much how much we're we're looking at funding this fall without the academy or city hall in there, that's already 25% of the total funding that, that we've put out. That would be 25% of the total funding that we've allocated today. I think that's what my, yeah, I think that's what my number just came to, right? 30% goes to Laurel Street. Um, so it's a big percentage of the, of, the, of the amount that we're funding today. And it's not everything for pickleball, but it's a lot. So that would be my, Lee, it's not everything. It's a lot. That's amazing. Your your voice is compelling here as a pickleball person and the rec department um, designee, Chris Helmer. Yeah, and and it comes with lessons for every person on the on the committee. It comes with the lessons. Meet me at the courts. No, <laughs> Chris Helmer. Um. I still have in the back of my mind the fact, and I, I I like the way this is headed, but I still have in the back of my mind the fact that um, we don't want to come up short, and and we want to make sure that we pick a number where it it's realistic that the money can be raised around it. And the only other thing, I I guess I want to frame this in the form of a question: Are any of us aware, Julia, um, of a situation where the rec department has in the past? charged uh northampton citizens user fees for facilities sure we do that all the time uh if okay. you want to go swim at uh yeah, at the yeah. aquatic center i was yeah. trying to think of the we don't call it jfk and in, in rec we call it the aquatic center anyway if you want to go swimming at the aquatic center there's a user fee okay. uh playing some of the indoor open sports and things user fees um so yeah, there are user fees in in many instances. I mean, rec, rec department is the one department that, uh, in theory, has a budget that returns a little money to the city's coffers, right? We're 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 charging, we charge kids to go to camp. We charge you to go use Musanti Beach. We charge we so yeah, we do some charging. Yeah. Okay, and I just want to be clear. I'm not advocating user fees. I actually don't like them for 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 recreation stuff, but. Um yeah okay thank you uh let's go down the line on this one so there's i i think we're in agreement of being supportive of pickleball i'm sensing that the question is i think there are two questions here one is at what partial funding do we feel will move the project forward without jeopardizing its completion hopefully this year and we don't want to put it off for another year um, also, we have yet to deal to answer, and perhaps we don't need this until two weeks from now, whether we would um, go out to bond on this to, 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 to hold off uh, on that. But let's continue with this partial funding. One, I think initial suggestion was for 415. Um, uh, Kevin made an alternative and, uh, to 350. Chris expressed some, Chris Hellman expressed some concern that. We, we just want to make sure that we're not lowballing this and and jeopardizing construction that the community can raise that amount of money to proceed um who else would like to weigh on this weigh in on this uh, i will call on you then bev nothing jeff 
I think <clears throat> I think 350 gets the courts built and I'm all in. Let's do it. Uh, Kevin, you've spoken to this already. Martha. Slow on the, slow on the uptake there. Um, yeah, I think I'm in support of it. I'm in support of it. Um, you know, I, again, this budget that was done in September, um, oh, actually it was revived, excuse me, re revived, revised in October. Um, you know, this is this year's costs. They're not going to build this this before the end of the year. So it, we're talking about next year. And, you know, prices in the construction industry are very, very, very shaky and uh, inflated, extremely inflated. And so I just, um, I think $350,000 is a very generous gift towards this. But I, you know, I don't know whether when the bids actually come in on this, whether it will get them built or not. I can't say. It would be great to have some real bids in front of us, but we don't. So, and then if, if they come in higher, the community will have to raise more money. If they come in higher, they can always come back to us as well, even for an expedited request. Um, Kevin and um, Chris Tate and uh, and Lemmy, we we entertain expedited requests if something comes and it's urgent. We got to move forward. We got to do it now. We can circumvent our normal. Uh, processes and, and move forward quicker and get that city council quicker. So that's always an option. Let's see, uh, who did not speak? Chris Tate, I think you are the one that came up with a 415. Now the question is 350. Yeah, I think 350 is good. If we're looking at that 300,000 and we only add contractor overhead and profit at 18%, that gets us to three 354,000. So that's basically no contingency and they can raise their own contingency. You know, I, I think that's totally fine. So I support 350. Okay, so I'm I'm hearing that we are in support of um, a partial funding and moving that at forward at 350,000. A stroll poll on this, a thumbs up on this. We are unanimous, okay. So let, uh, let's uh, recap. This is one of our longer longer meetings, but we're all hanging in there. Thank you. City Central Services Academy Music, we're putting off until uh, two weeks from now. I, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, City Hall, we're putting off until the, uh, until the spring, um, unless we hear such outcries that they would want to come back to us in two in two weeks. Boggy Meadow Road, full funding. Historic Northampton, um, full funding for the clothing. We're putting off the other two. Uh, Parsons House and Shepherd House for a couple weeks. Evergreen Road, we are not funding. Rocky Hill Greenway, full funding. Connecticut River, uh, multi-use, full funding. Pickleball, partial at 350. Trustees of Smith, no funding and Valley CDC full funding. Is that correct what I said? Okay. Uh, to do this formally, we would take motions and we would sort of vote on it formally. I'm thinking that we have this in our heads, right? And we can, we do not need to proceed any further than this. And our conversation in two weeks will deal with the Academy of Music with the two projects at um, at Historic Northampton with to bond or not to bond uh, pickleball. Um, wh where are we in City Hall? I know Chris Tate threw, ma made a suggestion. Maybe we, we, we also look at that in two weeks, but I think we had, we were putting that off until the spring. Is that correct? So well, the, the that. thing that gives me pause is that Pat from Central Services prioritized um, City Hall over the Academy of Music. So if we're going to hear from him or get more information from him in the next two weeks, I would just be curious why. And maybe if there's a breakdown, we can get, you know, if there's some work we can do in City Hall, similar to the Academy of Music, I'd just like to have that information. Um, so instead of having City Hall completely out, let's just 
get more information from central services and make a decision next in two weeks. How do people feel about that? Okay, I'm seeing nodding heads, uh, thumbs up on on this. Okay, great, Chris Tate. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, so, Academy of Music City. And thank Hall. you, Lemmy, too, for inspiring. Yes. Us. Yeah. Thank you, Lemmy. Um, Academy of Music City Hall and and half of historic Northampton are being put off until uh, two weeks from now. We are in consensus on Boggy Meadow Trail, Evergreen Road, Rocky Hill Greenway, Connecticut River Greenway, building assessment at Smith Charities in Laurel Street Housing. We are in uh, consensus about 350 for Pickleball. We have not discussed whether to bond or not to bond, but that's a question once we see the overall budget and what we intend to do or not to do with Academy and City Hall. Um, is that, is that correct? What I, in that, okay. And people feel comfortable moving forward with that in two weeks. So I think our homework in, in, for the next two weeks, um, uh, uh, is to, is to sort of weigh in, in our own heads about this Academy Music City Hall and, and, uh, the two historic North Hampton ones, as well as to bond or not to bond, um, I don't know about you all, but I was very uh, lost a little bit of sleep thinking about this, but I really appreciate our process. I think we did a really nice job in, uh, in not resolving everything tonight, but in doing a pretty good job in resolving most of it. Um, and what we needed to, we're putting off for, for two weeks. If we have any conditions that we want to uh, put out there, I think, uh, Chris Hellman suggested one that if in fact we're going to do uh, Central uh, City Hall, then the city should pony up the rest. Um, but any conditions that we have now is the time, not now, in two weeks will be the time to do that. So be thinking of conditions so that Sarah's going to, she sent us today those council orders. And for those of you that knew, the three new folks, we will sort of approve not just our funding of the projects or our recommendations, but also what those council orders are um, so uh, with with uh, with conditions if in fact um, and I can't remember Sarah do we put the conditions on the council orders or do those go somewhere it, else it kind of depends on what it is um, some of them are something that's so important to communicate that we do include them in the council orders others are you know more detail oriented so those go in the contracts um, but if anybody has thoughts you know shoot those over me and I'll be um, revising the, the draft council orders and sending those out to right. Um And so I'll, I'll make it clear to central services that you know, someone needs to be here to, to talk about these. I think that would be really, that would them. be super helpful. But is there, is there anything in particular that people want to see in advance other than, you know, please come tell us more about the capital improvement process and how you're programmatically figuring out how to deal with all of the city's buildings. Chris Tate? Uh, it's really just about partial funding. You know, what makes sense? What can we break out? Or, and and also, um, oh man, I can't think of the term now. Uh, sorry, I'm blanking on it. Um, but, you know, is there some, some money that they need to get through the winter and then they could still come back to the spring for the remainder of it, something like that? You know, is there immediate money that that they need to do the work right now that's particularly in regard in, in my opinion for the roof on uh on the academy what if they could break that down exactly what how to protect that infrastructure is so is so important uh anything else that we want to pass on to sarah we can always do that we can do that one-on-one -on -one to sarah during the next during the next two weeks uh any other business not foreseen when the agenda was published. I'll just I, offer I, a comment that having uh, late night meetings with Sarah on Conscom and now a late night meeting with Sarah for CPC, I think uh, Sarah is a, a treasure and uh, I am for one very grateful to her. How do, 
How do communities do it without a Sarah? I mean, could you imagine <laughs> don't us, have any doing, idea. us doing this without without Sarah, Julia? Oh, you're just waving. Oh, got it. I, yeah, I have so no Sarah, idea. Sarah, really, we cannot, we cannot but, but, thank you enough. Yeah, and, and let's not loan her out. Let's keep her. No. no. Uh, Sarah's always very friendly when I call her for the sixth time in a week with the exact same question because I can't remember what it was that I asked her a day before. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much. It's always a, a just a great um, privilege for me to hear what everyone has to say. We are a thoughtful bunch, and I think we're doing our community a great service.